We are now live. So session two, a day with Zenla. We have the fabulous Alice with us today. And of course, if you've read any of the notes on a day with Zenla session two, you'll realize that I don't mention what Alice is doing because she always keeps it a secret so she can surprise you guys. And um, she's got a surprise for you today. So I'm not even going to um, talk about it at all because she's going to reveal it to you. <laughs> it's, uh, she's sneaky like that, you know. <laughs> you know, you know. I just I like to keep you on your toes, David. You're always so well planned out. So I like to add a little excitement for you. <laughs> it's brilliant. So um, also, by the way, guys, um, Alice has got she's had some power outages um, in Florida. And so she doesn't know what's going to happen. So I'm going to I'm going to be around. So if if Alice drops offline, you know, her electricity just stops for some apparent reason. I'm going to be there to pick up. So I'm I'm with Alice on this. I'm just going to clear myself off. And if anything happens, you see anything go crazy, stay on and I'll just pick up. And then um, Alice will either drop back in or we'll carry on with the show. So that's the way we roll. Hopefully everything will be OK. But today has been quite a bug buggy day so i'm just hoping the afternoon session runs smoothly all right so i'm gonna hand over to you alice take it away thank you so much david i appreciate it so today i decided there's been just a lot of stuff happening around uh video with zendler and so that is what I wanted to talk to you about today is using live video in your business, because it used to be we thought of live video as streaming live to, you know, Facebook or YouTube or something. But live video has really grown to include other types of live video, which is your live classes, your live webinars, as well as your live streaming. And so because we're always expanding that. You heard Rakesh uh, on office hours the other day talking about really leaning into the live management inside of Zendler and adding in the calendar features. So even your one-to-one -one interactions on Zoom, those virtual live videos are really becoming more and more relied upon in online business. So I just wanted to go over some things with video and your presence and using it and how you can use it and how you can leverage it better. So we're just going to chit chat. I do have my phone here with um, Facebook open. So I have the comments if anybody uh, has questions or anything. I have those available right here. So um, the first part of it is that yeah, live streaming is more than just live streaming now, right? It's all of these different uh, mediums where we're interacting. And video has always been a really important part of, of having an online business because it's such a flexible uh, media to use, right? Once you record a live video or stream a live video, record it, <laughs> well, however you want to say that, afterwards, you have the ability to transcribe that video and you can use that transcription for a blog post, for example. You can take clips out of your videos and share those on social media. You can take the audio out of your video and use that as a podcast. So video content um, is very easy to uh, repurpose or reuse in different ways. And you can do the same thing if you're recording your live webinars or live classes, you could do the same things with those, right? You can get those transcripts going. You can um, take clips of those webinars, uh, video clips out and share those on social media to promote your knowledge, your expertise in any particular um, area. So one of the things about video is if you don't do it a lot, and you're not used to being on video, then you might need to get more comfortable with your presence on video and more comfortable using video on a regular basis. So 
I just want to go over maybe a few tips of things that you can do to start to get comfortable with how you show up on video. Because for everybody, it's going to be different. Um, there's no one right way to do video. You have to find your own way. And in order to do that, you actually have to, you know, get on video. <laughs> um, so I used to, years ago, it's been a while, I think Kevin will actually remember this. I had a live video course back in like 2017. And so I've dusted some stuff off out of the vault <laughs> um, from that from that old course uh, to share some some just some tips and insights with you on, you know, how to sh show up a little bit more frequently. So um, one of the things is to that tips that I've always shared is to go live and do the live streaming parts and do that fairly frequently. Um, you know, show up three to five times a week in little short sprints, right? So five minutes. Um, the shorter content of video content is doing really well these days. You have the TikTok, you have Instagram and Facebook Reels, you have YouTube Shorts. Those shorter pieces of video content are, are getting more and more popular anyway. So leverage the fact that that's happening right now for a video and use it to help yourself get comfortable on camera, right? So show up three to five times a week with some video content and do that for say a period of 30 days, right? Give yourself a 30 day period where you're going to show up on video as often as possible. This does a couple of things for you. Uh, it gives you an opportunity to get used to sort of the process of it, right? So setting up your camera, getting your lighting, getting your position, you know, get used to looking at the camera instead of looking at yourself on the screen. Um, you're still going to do that. Like I keep notes and so I reflect on them, um, but you want to connect with people and look them in the eye as often as possible. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like it's not, you know, we're, we're not uh, applying to the Oscars here or anything. So you're okay. It's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and that's one of the biggest things that helps you kind of get over taking those actions is getting over the idea that when you show up on camera, it has to be perfect uh, because it doesn't. Uh, David and I did the YouTube challenge a few weeks back. And one of the things that I talked about is that if you go to YouTube, you find your favorite YouTuber, right? Someone who has thousands, millions of followers on YouTube, and you look at their videos and they have real high production, right? They have the perfect background, they have the perfect lighting, video effects, transitions, editing, all of this fancy stuff in their video. And it can make you feel like, oh, I have to make sure my videos look that great. But if you scroll down, scroll back to when this YouTuber was first uh, producing videos, you're going to see that the production value was really not the same, right? It was like their camera phone and, you know, uh, they were in their bathroom, right? <laughs> you can see the hand towel in the toilet in the back of the video. Um, so the production value does not have to be high. They got to that high production value because they started where they were, right? And that's what you have to do. You have to start where you are when it comes to anything, right? You have to take the action because it's the experience that you have doing the thing that helps you grow more confidence in doing the thing. It helps you figure out what you like and what you don't like about that thing. It also helps you figure out what your audience or your students or your clients like and don't like about the type of content or the way you're doing things. You get so much more information and experience when you actually take the action. And the only way you can do that is if you get out of your way, stop worrying about it being perfect and highly produced and just start where you are. So here's, and, and here's how I do that, right? I had a live video course and the whole time I had the live video course and the whole time that I had clients that I was showing how to do this, I did not have 
an external camera of any kind. I didn't have a webcam. I just used my iPhone. That was it. That's all I used. I had some ring lights and earbuds, right? I now have a Logitech uh, Brio webcam, um, you know, because I want to have higher quality. That 4K um, look in the videos is, is something that I wanted to get to that next level of. But I've been online doing live video, uh, 2017, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20, 20, like more than five years. And I just now a few weeks ago have this external webcam. So it does not have to be perfect. You don't have to have all the fancy things. You don't have to do that. You just have to press the button that says record or go live and just do the thing and, and get comfortable, right? So that's one thing that I just really want you all to know and understand that it doesn't have to be perfect, right? It doesn't have to have this high production value. Get out of your own head when it comes to that. Trust me, uh, you will get much further and you'll get to that point of having better production value once you actually take the steps, right? I think about it like my kids um, when the, as a mom, you know, when they were, when they learned to walk, they didn't just sit there and watch uh, other adults walk around for a few years before they decided to get up and then they just walked perfectly. No, they stumbled all over the place. They held on to the furniture, right? Um, they fell over. It was a process. They had to build the muscles um, in order to walk on their own and then, you know, run, jump, play, and all those other things. And the same thing is true for any other part of your business is you have to make those stumbles and you have to build the muscles before it becomes something that you do really well. And it's okay to not be perfect at things. Um, I think that's one of the things uh, hopefully in the online space that we're getting more and more comfortable with is the idea that it doesn't have to be perfect, right? You know, the gurus that are out there, all those fancy influencers that want to portray this perfect life, we know that's not reality. We just show up where we are and who we are. And so I encourage you to do that when it comes to getting on video and doing that thing. Now, for some of you, it's okay. If you're like, nope, not doing video, then, then that's fine too. You can find other ways. Um, but today we're gonna talk more about how to actually like do the video, right? So if you want to do these frequent, get comfortable. I call it the fab, fast, and frequent uh, model of getting comfortable on camera. Um, this model does a couple of things. It gets you comfortable. It also helps you test out a variety of topics to see not only what you like talking about, but what your audience likes you talking about. So you get a lot of really great data when you do this fab, fast, frequent model. So fabulous just means that it's really to the point, right? You're, you're focused on one main point, you know, maybe two or three little main points under there, but one main point that you're focusing on. Um, so it's really to the point and fabulous there, right? Like that one point. And fast means that it's in that five minute range, right? You're doing it super quick. It's not long. People can consume it very quickly and easily. So it's fast and frequent means you're doing it often, right? You're doing it three to five times a week. And there's a lot of benefit to that too, right? Because content, content, <laughs> content, um, you, the more often you show up, the more uh, opportunities people have to see you. Uh, the more opportunities that, you know, because not everybody sees every post, right? That's how the algorithms work. Um, so if you're doing it three to five times a week, then more people will see you. And even if someone sees you all five times, that's okay, because you're really building that, and I'm going to say this word, familiarity. Ooh, I said it right. Um, factor, right? The more often someone sees you, uh, the more comfortable they get with you, right? So just like the more often you go live and get on camera, the more comfortable you'll be doing it. Uh, the same goes for how often people see your face popping up on, you know, Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, and all of the, on TikTok, wherever it is you're showing up, the more often you do that, 
then they start to get comfortable. They start to feel like they know you, they recognize your face. There are a lot of benefits to people getting to know you in that way, right? And again, you're testing out all of these different topics. Um, so you're getting that data. People start to see you as like accessible, right? You're always showing up. You're always around, even though it's just a quick five minute video every day, five minutes, that's it every day. And people start to feel like, wow, this person is really showing up and they're reliable and they start to recognize you and, and they start to feel that connection, right? And then you stay top of mind. So if in those five minutes, you're talking about topics that are really related to who you are and what you do, then people start to remember and you start to stay top of mind for that thing that you talk about as well. So a lot of benefits to the fab fast frequent, right? A lot of benefits. So let's talk about the content. So it could be like, oh, I have to go live every single day. I have to be on video every day. What am I going to talk about? That's like the number one most frequently asked question I've ever had across any of the things is what do I post? What do I talk about? So I'm going to share with you some universal topic ideas to really help you um, start to think about stuff for your specific industry or your specific um, niche so that you have things that you can talk about. Okay. So you're going to brainstorm and, you know, set a timer, you know, whatever brainstorming looks like for you, that's, that's what you really want to, that's what you really want to do. So universal topics, let me see, I have a list somewhere. Okay. So universal topics are things like FAQs. Now, if you're new and you don't have any FAQs, then you can look to industry leaders or other people in your niche and find out what their FAQs are and use that for your inspiration. That's fairly easy to do to find um, FAQs and start to use that type of content for your, your quick video content. Myths are another really great um, topic. Uh, we all have annoying things in the industry or myths that uh, drive us crazy, things people believe or um, perceptions, false perceptions people have. So myths is a really great one to talk about. Think about those from your industry and in your niche. Uh, tutorials are always great. So if there's a part of in your business where you can show people how to do a thing, um, those always work really great as well. Uh, the whole problem and solution um, formula for a, a particular topic. Behind the scenes. This is a really good one because it makes people feel like they have an opportunity, you know, they're getting a peek behind the curtain. Maybe it's a behind the scenes on, you know, how you make something if you make things um, or how you set up, how you get ready to do the thing that you do. So these little behind the scenes things really make people feel like they know you, they're connected to you and it feels more personal and you really build a connection when you're able to do more of that behind the scenes thing. So those are really popular. Uh, tips, always good, right? Here's five tips to do X, Y, Z. Reviews. So in your niche, in your industry, are there particular products that you use that you can talk about and give reviews for? Uh, in your niche or industry, maybe there's books. If there's books on your topic, you can give reviews of those books. So those are really good ones to do as well because now you're also providing a bit of an extra service to your audience by giving feedback on different products or books in your industry. Lessons, lessons learned. So here's five lessons I learned from doing X, Y, Z for the last 10 years. And this works on a whole bunch of different levels because now people are getting that sort of insider information from your experience. And at the same time, you're also positioning yourself as that expert because you have these lessons that you learned and you learn lessons through experience and knowledge, right? So you really are also positioning yourself um, in a really positive light when you do that. 
Um, you can do, okay, so I'll go through these next ones. Listicles, like five things to know about X, Y, Z. Definitions, that's one, like sometimes when I first came on today, I said, we think of live video as live streaming, but live video is sort of expanded and to include things like live webinars and live classes and live one-to-one -one meetings. And we're sort of working differently. So that kind of definition in your industry, things change and they grow and they evolve. So maybe talking about something in your industry where you maybe define it differently or it's evolving into something new and different. Those are really great to talk about. Of course, industry news, always, always hot topics, right? Trending news, uh, things that are relevant in your industry that are happening now. Um, you can even do in line with that predictions, like you predict this is what's coming next, right? So those are really great ones too. Now, now that you have this list, you just start making a list of all of these different things, whether it's the myths or the FAQs or whatever those, those specific things are from your industry that you could share with people, right? You start asking yourself questions. You know, what are those frequently asked questions? What do you wish people would ask you? Um, is there something that you know the step-by-step -step to that you could share a tutorial with? You know, what are your favorite tools and resources? How do you save time? These are just questions you can ask yourself to really help you get those ideas flowing because you're going to want to make a pretty long list, right? Because if you're going to go live every day or three times a week for a month, then you're going to need at least those like 12 topics that you're going to talk about. So it could be 20, could be 12. Maybe if you're going to go live seven days a week, it could be 30 that you need, right? But remember, you only need that one little nugget for it, right? Because we're talking five minutes, you're going to hop on video, you're going to be there five minutes, and that's it. So it doesn't have to be, you're not giving an hour presentation. So you don't have to stress about that. It's just a quick nugget that you're giving in five minutes or less. It doesn't even have to, it could be a one minute video, right? So five minutes or less. So you're going to make a list of what those ideas are and start testing them out, right? <laughs> um, if you decide that myths are something you really like, uh, you can talk about myths in a couple of different ways. So you can do like XYZ myth everybody believes. Um, you can also make it into um, some sort of a listicle, you can combine them like three myths, right? You didn't know about, or three myths that you believe about X, Y, Z, right? So you can combine them. Now you want to look at your schedule because now you're going live every day or three times a week or whatever that looks like. So, um, make it at a convenient time for you. Don't stress about it. You know, don't worry about time zones. Don't worry about where you're at or how you're doing it because that's just one more obstacle that'll prevent you from just pushing the record button or the go live button. So do it. The most important part is that you do it at this point when it's convenient for you to do it. So if first thing in the morning is where you want to go and get it out of the way so it's done and over with then that's when you do it. Doesn't matter if it's not convenient for other people because the point isn't to have other people present with you when you're doing it at this point. The point is for you to be able to get comfortable doing it on a regular basis, get comfortable on camera, test out those topics, right? So there's a lot of other benefits to you doing this. So don't really worry about whether it's convenient for other people at this point, focus on whether it's convenient for you, right? So that you can start to get comfortable, okay? Um, and then once you do that, you wanna map out what that schedule looks like for yourself every day, which day, um, which topic you're gonna talk about, right? And here, I'm gonna give you some tips on how to present this too. So let me pull this up. 
So once you have the days and what sort of topic you're going to talk about, now you want to map it out. You, some people do really well with a script. If you need to write out everything you're going to say and you need to run through it a time or two, then that's what you do. Then do that. There's no right way or wrong way. Um, if, if you know what you're talking about and you just need to have a opening an intro and an outro sort of prepared and your main point, and then you can roll with it, then do that too, right? It's however it works for you, do that. So, but the most important part is know what you're going to say when the camera starts rolling, right? So have that introduction, which could be, hello, good morning. What's up? How's it going? Could be any of those things. Like I used to always start every video that I did with, hello, my fabulous friends, right? Like that was just the first thing I said. And because I knew what the very first thing I was going to say was, it made it really easier to then go into my content. There wasn't like this awkward, like, hi, um, hello, I'm here today, right? Like there, you get rid of that awkwardness when you know exactly what you're going to say when the camera starts rolling, right? Same thing goes with how you're going to end it, right? What are you going to say at the end of your video? You're going to say, hello, my fabulous friends, when it starts. And what are you going to say when it's over? Instead of stumbling around the end, okay, well, bye, all right, see you later, right? No awkward goodbyes. Um, know exactly how you're going to end the video. So like now I say, bye for now. And then that's it. And then I end the video, right? So I know when the end is because the middle bit, that's your content, right? That's your main point. That's your topic. And that's your main point. Now you could have um, three little nuggets that you want to share about that main point, or you could write out a whole script, or you could just have the idea and you can just roll with it and talk about it. Whatever one of those things work for you, but know how you're going to start and know how you're going to finish, right? Know what those things are. And when I say also know how to finish, the other thing that you may want to start to do in your videos, even though these are quick, is start to add a call to action because you really want people to take an action. Even if that call to action is, hey, if you want to see more videos like this, you know, check out my channel, right? Go to my video list, check out my channel. Um, if you're on YouTube, you can say subscribe, hit the bell, right? So have that call to action, even, it's for, even if it's for people to watch more. Even if you don't have a call to action, that's, hey, buy my thing or sign up to this. Have a call to action of some kind. Okay, let me check and see if I've got any comments. I do not, right? So have, have that call to action and have that ready for you. Okay, so, so yeah, so, okay, yeah, I have that here too. Um, yeah, the calls to action could just be to like the video. It gets a little wonky on Facebook because Facebook doesn't like you to ask for engagement. Um, but other platforms don't care. You can say, hey, like and share or whatever, um, but you should probably should avoid that on um, Facebook. Um, so yeah, so call to action could be, um, you know, answer this question, um, check out my channel for more videos, any of those things. Okay, and you can write it out on a piece of paper. Um, which of those things that you're going to do? What's going to be that call to action that you're going to have on every single video? Know what it is. Now comes the fun part. You've done the videos. You have your topics. You've done your, you're doing your videos. You need to keep track of them, right? So you want to know things like, how many people watched this video? So you want to check back on it, right? Um, check back after 24 hours so you could kind of see what's happening with it. And then check back after a couple of days and track how many views you have. Track how many likes you have. Track how many comments that you have on, on this video um, and how many reactions. So um Facebook has reactions, 
what other platforms, uh, you know, just check depending on where you're sharing this video, because it doesn't really matter. All that matters is that you're tracking the data to see, and you also want to track how you feel about this video. How did you like talking about this particular topic? Did it feel comfortable to you? Um, was it awkward? Like, were you like, yeah, I probably won't do any more of those. Was there a specific um, sort of theme around that, that you're like, yeah, I don't need to do any more myths. I don't like those, right? Like, so figure that out for yourself because that's really where you wanna get to be when it comes to figuring out what kind of content you're gonna produce is figuring out the stuff that you enjoy talking about, because let's face it, this is your business. You should enjoy it. Yes, it starts with you. It's not about you, right? You need this content to resonate with your ideal clients too, but it does start with you. And if you're going to keep moving forward and doing more content and, and staying on top of things, then it has to be something you enjoy as well. So don't discount your own enjoyment when it comes to the topics and the way that you're presenting these topics as part of important information for you, right? So it should be fun for you, enjoyable for you and enjoyable for your clients. They like it, your audience, they're, they're enjoying this content. So let's do more of it, right? So start tracking that. How, what did you think about it? How did you like it? How did your clients like it? And start keeping track of those topics because then, those are the topics that you can start to focus on when you slow down your production, right? You do your 30 day sprint of getting comfortable and then you track all of these topics. And now you have topics that you know you liked and your audience liked. So now you can scale back to doing things once a week. Maybe there's one of those topics that you could schedule a webinar and do a longer presentation on right? So you get all sorts of information that you can do a lot with. And those video, those short five minute video clips, you can also repurpose those. You can pull the audio out of those and put them on a podcast, right? And have that really quick audio version of what you were doing. So you can repurpose those to create more content for yourself, right? You can do that. Let's see. Let's check the comments. Okay. Okay, so if there are any questions, do let me know. Um, let's talk about, I'm just scrolling through what I have here. Let's talk about how, um, how you can take that information that you have now from all of these live videos that you've done and what that looks like with new content, right? Because it's not just live video anymore. Now it's the webinars or the live classes, or it can still be live video. It could just be longer live videos, right? You could do master classes, workshops, and you can do those live on a platform as a way to generate leads you can do them and so that they're public view and more people see them. You can use it as a way to um, generate leads and traffic directly to your website. So you're talking about um, driving the traffic there to register for a webinar through your Zendler site and structuring that um, maybe if you're not if you're not used to doing video, if you're not used to doing a lot of the live classes or webinars, then you might want to structure it so that you have like 30 minutes. Um, more and more today, people are very busy and they don't necessarily want to sit through an hour long or longer um, presentation. So even though you're not doing the, the quick little five minutes, you can keep master classes, you can keep trainings and webinars to that 30 minutes or less as well. And then leave time at the end for the questions for the Q&A, where the people who can stick around and engage with you more can. And then the people that have to run off and go they run off and go. Um, they've, they've gotten what they needed out of it and they're on their way. But then the people that 
potentially really want to hang out with you more, those are like even hotter leads if they're hanging out with you. More and more people hanging out with you is a good thing, is a good thing. So let's see. Okay. So next thing that you can do here, I'm just, I'm following my list. I'm finding it. <laughs> I'm dusting these off. Um, is to start to also ask yourself um, some questions about why these topics that you found were really great, why that you think that they were great. Like, what do you think um, this topic engaged them the most? Why do you think that that resonated with them the most? Um, and why do you think it had the most views was it on a particular day? Was it a particular time? Was it a particular topic? Because you can also test out not just what you're doing um, with the lives topics, but um, test out different times of day, um, different days of the week, because it's always going to vary. I mean, I find Fridays to be the least engaging days when it comes to posting content, but that's just me personally. I'm sure other people out there are like, no, Fridays are great for me. <laughs> so it just depends. And you want to always be keeping track of that data for yourself. Keep track of it for yourself. Okay. I see a few people are watching. So if you have any questions about the live, about, um, doing more live video, oops, then just let me know. And I will check back uh, in the comments as it permits for me to, uh, to answer more questions for you. And the other thing I will try to do as well is um, post this list of ideas for how to come up with your topics. So those universal ideas around the FAQs and the myths and the tutorials, um, the behind the scenes, the lessons, those kind of things. Um, if you're interested in having sort of a list to keep you uh, inspired, do let me know that, that part of it as well so that I can, um, so that I can put that together for you. Okay, so let's recap. Fab fast and frequent is all about doing a sprint over a period of 30 days. Fabulous means that it's just one key point that you're trying to make in this thing. So it's easy to consume. It's easy to understand. It's fabulous, right? It's fast because it's under five minutes, like super quick, super fast, which that kind of content is out there right now. It's really doing very well um, with the, the TikTok and the reels and the shorts, all of that kind of content is doing good. So it's a good time to do this type of a um, format, right? It's really good time for that. So fabulous, fast, frequent, do it very often, right? Show up as often as possible so that you can start to get in a habit so that you can start to get comfortable. Also, other people are seeing you show up regularly. So they start to get to know you and you start to feel familiar to them. And it makes you appear to be reliable, accessible, uh, helps you form deeper connections with people, which is really important um, when you're looking at building a community and growing uh, your core sales or your coaching business, whatever that looks like for you, that know, like, and trust factor plays a big role in, um, in that happening for you and helping you to build momentum. So fab, fast, frequent. Um, start to make a list of topic ideas, right? Um, use the universal ideas around um, myths in your particular industry or niche, your favorite tools or resources that are part of your industry or your niche, the FAQs, um, behind the scenes look, lessons, all of those different type of universal topics and start to figure out where it is that you could create these little nuggets of information, these little nugget videos that you can put out there and 
um, get a big long list going, right? Because you're talking three to five times a week for 30 days, you need around 12 to 20 of those topics. So, so make up a whole bunch of a list, right? And then from that list, you're going to make sure that you have an intro. You're going to know, you can either write out a whole script and practice it. You're talking five minutes or less. You could probably run through a script a couple of times and get really comfortable with the content. Or you can um, just give yourself maybe more of an outline and just roll with it. That's totally fine too. Whatever your comfort is, don't overthink it, right? Because that's one of the things that holds people back the most is overthinking it, trying to make it perfect. When really just get out there and start talking, you'll learn as you go, you'll stumble around. It's fine. Um, you know, the world won't end because you stumbled around on video a couple of times. It's okay. And you'll get more confident. And then that's actually even more content for you later on, um, to bring back, right. The retro here's a retro me <laughs> here's old school me. Look at this first video. Um, I think I've shared that a couple of times, um, and maybe the YouTube challenge, that one of the time when Facebook first came out with live video, I did the live video and I did it from my phone. Cause remember I didn't have a webcam back then. And I was sideways because I started my video like on my phone this way, you know, and I started it and it started. And then I like turned or I turned it before I started it. And because I turned it before I actually started the video, it didn't actually adjust the orientation, but my camera was adjusted. So I was literally on camera sideways the whole time. Um, and I bring that back up and I show people and I'm like, look, like I did it, you can do it too, right? So you can show people, you know, the mistakes that you've made and what you've learned and how you've grown. Um, that's a really way, great way um, to also showcase the fact that you have knowledge and experience because look, I did this and I'm still here. Right. So try not to overthink it, make the, um, make the list, get the topics down, figure out how you're going to say hello to people like, Hey there, or howdy, or what's up? Like whatever that looks like to you, right? <laughs> figure out what you're going to say when you start, figure out how you're going to end it. Bye for now. See ya. Um, when my son was like five years old, we had he had a story time that he did on live video when he was just learning to read, and he would sign off every video, even though it was on Facebook. He would say "Peace out, YouTube." That was his sign off, and everybody got a big kick out of it and thought it was hysterical. So, whatever that sign off is for you, like have a great day. See you soon. See you next time, right? Whatever that looks like. Know what you're going to start with, know what you're going to end with, and then know what that little nugget is in the middle, um, that main point that you're going to make. And another really good tip, if you use Clubhouse um, and you go on Clubhouse, they now have the ability to do 30-second clips. So it's a really great idea if you go on Clubhouse, it's not video, but it's still live, it's still audio. And when you clip it, it creates a video. It's a static image, but it like it downloads as a as like a video. And you can upload those to different platforms, but there are 30 second clip. So if you can come up with something that's 30 seconds, that's like a real great nugget that you can share. And you do that say on Clubhouse, you can clip that from Clubhouse as well. And then you have that content that you can share around as well. Um, but even in your own video, even though it's say it's a five minute video, you can clip out little five or 10 second clips from that five minute video that you can also share places like Instagram, um, Facebook, uh, you can embed them on your blog. You can put those as the, the little 30 second nuggets. Um, you can embed though, or upload those as a podcast as well. So lots of things you can do with it. And then, you know, like you can be known for saying this one 
you know, little nugget thing. You could say it everywhere. You could say it all the time. <laughs> you could say it all the time. Okay, checking the comments. Okay. Oops. A list would be great. Okay, okay, I can definitely do that. I'll put together a little list. So I think that's about it. I mean, I know I have 15 minutes left, but I, there's no um, questions coming in. I always like to leave time uh, to answer questions. So if you have questions, um, do let me know what those are. Hi, David. <laughs> Hiya. So. Oh. Yeah, I've got some. Uh, yeah, no, I think that's really good today um, because videos, you know, is the way forwards, isn't it? It's the way forwards and it's really important. And like Alice pointed out there, you know, there's never going to be a right time for you to, if you're scared about setting up doing videos, there's never going to be a right time for you. You're always going to be really self-critical. Uh, what you can do as well, and this is what I know Alice does, uh, because I do it now as well, is I set up a test uh, Facebook group and I'm in there and I've got, um, I've got, Alice in there, she's joined. And it's a really good way to test out how you look because you can stream into the Facebook group, into a private Facebook group, and you can watch yourself back. So you can see, and you'll be surprised, do it 10 times, you know, like Alice said, like have that intro, have that outro, and then feel, you know, you can either do what we do, um, but we've been doing this for quite a long time, which is like ad lib the whole thing. We know the points we need to hit and we just go ahead and do it. You can script it out. I have that start intro and that outro that you can end it like, you know, by folks and those sort of things uh, for the end. And then just record it and do it about 10 times and just look and you will get better and you'll feel more comfortable. Even though there's no one looking at you apart from your friends, maybe then it will make you feel more comfortable. I promise you that if you do it 10 times, that last take will be much better than the first one. You'll just see these things. So do it, watch it, go, hmm, that's a little bit bad. And then, then do it. I mean, you see it. Like I've been working really hard to get rid of ums and ahs because it's something I noticed in my video and I was like, it doesn't sound good. But other people don't really notice it which is funny, isn't it? Because you're, I'm self-critical of it. And I was watching breakfast TV this morning and uh, there was a guy on there and every set, cause I'm like, I listen for those sounds. He was like using R ah and um every single time it ah, and then he carry on ah, and he would ca and I was like, Oh my God, this is terrible. But probably <laughs> most people wouldn't notice. Do you know what I mean, Alice? Mm -hmm. I it's do like, know what you mean. I do. Sometimes it depends. I have moments where maybe if I'm more nervous or if I'm in a weird environment or I'm stressed out that day, could be a lot of reasons. I'm on video, ums and ahs all over the place. And I'm like, wow, did I not have enough coffee yet? Like, what was that about? So I still have moments where I do it. And then I have moments where, yeah, you can get through an entire conversation and there's not, um, um, uh, uh, I do tend to use other filler words like, like, <laughs> like and like. so, and then so, yeah. and then, you know, so, so I do yeah. that and there are filler words and you catch yourself doing it. And a lot of people won't notice it. You're correct. Yeah. But it's important. It's important to just watch yourself on video, but don't be too harsh and don't let it stop you because it's like Alice said, you know, we all started somewhere and we all put videos up. I must admit until I really joined Zenner, I wasn't really on camera, but I was very comfortable in talking because that's all I do in the thousands of hours of recordings that I've done um, over the years. So I'm very used to talking. So it was hard to get there. I went, um, you know, I had Howard Whiteson. He's the um, charisma coach. He he kindly uh, showed me at tips and training how to get over certain things. So although I've been doing it for, for a long time, it was still interesting that you can pick up these tips really quickly to get over these, these set problems. And you'll see that in, um, in one of our courses, I think uh, we've got it in there. I'll try and remember which course it is, but it, we talk about that. We talk about that element of things as well. And we sort of briefly covered it a bit in the YouTube uh, challenge, didn't we? 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. Because it's it really is just a matter of, of creating a habit. And it's about progress over perfection. So don't look at it from the point of you're going to nitpick it apart and it's terrible. Look at it from the perspective of I can, I'll do, I can have an improvement next time. Next time I'll do this and just keep doing that. Improve, improve, improve. Because if you were to, as um, David mentioned from the YouTube challenge, if you were to find your favorite YouTuber or Facebook live streamer or whatever, um, thing that you use is, um, you will see that <laughs> their first videos were not as good as their most recent videos. You'll also see a natural progression of how they improved. You'll start to see, oh, they changed their background, their lighting, they changed this. And after a few weeks, maybe they changed this other thing and then, right? And so on and so on. And they gradually improved. That's progress. And you can have progress too. And it's really good because when you're doing them fast, you're doing them frequent and you're doing them over the sprint in this short amount of time, you start to get comfortable because when you're using, if you're on the Zendler platform, then you have the live webinars, you have the live classes, you have the live streaming, and those are longer bits of content. And so you want to get comfortable just showing up on camera, looking at the camera, having your lighting right, sort of figuring out all of those little bits and pieces so that when you get on camera for a longer period of time, it's not as awkward, right? Because if you haven't been on camera in a while, you're not used to it. And now you have to sit through this hour webinar with people on camera with you. What do you do? Like, are you going to be like, oh, wait, um, um, let me see, you know, like you won't know, oh, oh, that's not right. Let me fix this bit or, uh, uh, oh, that lighting's not good, right? You start to get, you know, awkward or uncomfortable when you don't have to be if you have been practicing for a while and it'll help you improve those longer live presentations if you can just start to get comfortable with the process. It's important. Yeah, I think that's, that's the key there is just build up build on top of it and then um you know you'll be you'll be sailing then uh also like if you are beginning this then it is a good idea it isn't a good idea to just freewheel it um you should have something written down bullet points are really good because it means you don't have to like and that's the thing you see a lot is like the, either the up the nostril shot or where people are looking over there because they've written it down, or where they're looking down like this, and you see their head, and uh, they're just all their eyes are just reading because they've got it behind it because the the script the the script is right below, and it can be a little bit off putting. I find the easiest way is to bullet point things because you know you, as long as you hit those key things, you've covered. And what it also means is that if you rerun it, it's slightly different. So, and it's not bad to, to I don't want to sound bad, sounds bad to say this, but it isn't actually bad to make some mistakes because people like to see that other people are human and that yes. this happens. And you can have fun with it. I think Alice touched on this as well. It's like today, right? We had, I've got pre-recorded videos, an hour and a half. The sound didn't come through. So I was like, oh my God, I've got to do something here. So I was thinking there while I was trying to sort the problem out, I've got to do it. So I just got stuck in. I mean, lucky I know in the back to front, but if I didn't, it could be a big problem. You know, if I had to make it up. So being able to adjust, having ways to fill things in in case a disaster happens. It's like Alice told me before, there's power cuts around her way. So we're prepared. It's like, right, if Alice cuts off, if she just explodes, um, I can jump in there and, and recover <laughs> it by doing the recording. When she gets back online, she can carry on and finish it off. So you, you're always got a plan B, you know, and even a plan C um, so that you're covering yourself. What will this do? This will make you feel relaxed. You'll be like, right, I'm in total control. You know, it will give you that thing. And if you haven't got those things as backup, you could have a serious problem, especially if people have paid you a lot of money. 
So they will expect it to come in there. They don't mind you making the odd mistake, like sound doesn't come through. As long as you can pick up and do the training, show them what you intended to do. And that's what you want to do. Make sure you've hit all those goals that you've promised these people that have paid you money for. And then they, they don't really care about the background and things. They want to hear you. They want to hear from you. You're the expert. That's what they're paying for. They're not paying for lovely graphics and around. It's all very nice and pretty, but that's not the main point. Kevin mentions this. Alice mentions this. Of course, we're always trying to improve because that's what we do. And you're trying to get the best thing that you can do. And that's why we're playing around and messing everything up with, <laughs> with what happened today. But, you know, you've got to break a few eggs to make an omelette. So uh, that's exactly, what exactly. And you do. And you can laugh at it. You'll feel more comfortable and you'll get to the point where you're like, yeah, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. I can go with it. Right. Um, and doing that practice, like David said, you'll start to understand what your backups could be. Cause maybe right now you don't know what your backup would be or how you'd handle that. So doing the shorter, more frequent things will help give you insights and clues into how you can handle little mistakes and bumps as they come along your way. So that's, that's always good. Cause I, I don't even care anymore. Like, I'm just like, whatever, <laughs> like messy. I used to have to have my hair done and look all like, like looking fancy. And now my hair is in a bun. Like I don't even hardly put on any makeup. Like I have on no like mascara, nothing. I'm just like, let's go, let's do it. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. It's, it's good. I mean, obviously, like if you're doing a live, you know, you want to make sure you, you haven't just got out of the shower or something. <laughs> Unless that's I, your niche. I mean, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to judge, but never know. Uh, yeah. So that is fantastic, Alice. Brilliant. Um, that's a really good subject um, right up my street, that. So I'm sure like people, there's not many people in the chat. It's four people uh, viewing stuff. Uh, I'm pretty sure maybe it's because of Kevin's challenge on a challenge. It's ending today. So I know a lot of people that would normally be on um, are not on because of that. So um, Kevin's running that the last day of the challenge challenge. Uh, so I want to kind of end, wrap this up a little bit because um, I want to tell you a little bit about what's going on with um, me and Alice. Like we, we've got two um, challenges in the pipeline. We've got an email challenge that's going to be run fairly soon. And then we've got the next one, which is, and I spoke about this earlier in, in part one, Alice. Uh, we've also got a running a summit challenge as well. So um, we are looking at that, but we're going to run a summit before that as well. So me and Alice are kind of like um, hooking up on that one and, and trying to sort things out. But it's going to be really exciting. Um, it's going to be really good. There's a lot of content already. Uh, we're totally setting up the way the summit challenge will work itself. And uh, it should be really interesting because, we, like we said, we're going to run a summit as well. And we've got lots of, um, yeah, lots of good stuff coming along as well. So thanks ever so much, Alice. Thank you, yes. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. I shall right. carry on now. Hopefully yes. I'll be trouble free, but we'll see. <laughs> I'll keep my fingers crossed for you, David. Keep them keep, all crossed. Keeping them crossed. All right, <laughs> <laughs> bye. See you later, Alice. Thank you. Right, guys. So um, we're now going to jump into the next part now, which is going to be a, now this is pre-recorded content. For you guys that haven't seen any of these before, we, um, some, we haven't done them recently because we've been really busy with other stuff like all the tutorial site updating all the courses and, and all the things like that. Uh, and running lots of challenges as well. So um, we're trying to get, we're going to try and get back into it. I'm sure it'll all settle down by kind of mid-summer and then we can get back on the route um, and I can get back on to things like the um, Facebook um, FBHs and our senders and these sort of things. Uh, but we are going to be running a series. Um, we're going to be totally redoing the way the complete guide to Zendler works. So it's going to be a lot easier for you guys to find information. Um, that's paramount importance to me. But live builds are also a really good chance for you to see um, it actually happening in front of your eyes. So we're going to run in. I'm just going to swap my camera now for um, a virtual camera. 
So um, this is my OBS. It's just the quality is better for the virtual camera. So I'm just going to swap the screen share around uh, from that. So I'll disappear for a second. And I'm just going to screen share the virtual camera. So let me go and grab it for you. And then we're back. And then I can share the content through. So I'm just going to go through some of my cameras. OK, there we go. So I'm screen sharing and I'm in virtual camera mode. So um, this is um, this is going to be good for you. So I did a WordPress site, uh, a WordPress to Zen the site conversion for one of our instructors called Mini Click Quick. And she was having problems. This is quite a long one. This is about an hour and 20 minutes. Um, but it does show how you can get a WordPress site, pre-styled WordPress site across into Zendler. And for you guys that haven't seen this sort of stuff before, you want to make sure that you're looking inside our YouTube channel. So that's youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Zendler. And inside there, hit the subscribe and the bell because we always put new videos on there and you'll be notified. But if you scroll down the bottom, you're going to see a uh, playlist called Live Builds. And inside there, we have cut about, I don't know, six or seven live builds that we've done with actually you guys so we're going to start it back up again and uh, probably change the format a little bit on it make it a little bit more exciting uh, but it's a really good one to watch so i've got this one ready for you now i think it should all work perfect so we're going to start with the word Press conversion and then this session which normally runs from three till six is actually going to run till 6 30 because the second video video that i've got is actually a really really nice little one it's um great tips and tricks in zenla so it's showing you a load i just gunshot a load of different tips and tricks and that's coming on up after the wordpress conversion site now whilst this is going on if you've got any questions that you see when, when we're building things, write them in the chat and we'll reply to them, okay? Um, other than that, just sit back and enjoy this and try and pick up the tips going along. Get a little notepad, write down any concerns you've got or any problems that you've had, drop them into the chat in one go or just write them down as you're working through the video. But I'm now going to put the WordPress conversion video across to you for you guys to see. So. I will see you very, very soon. And I'm monitoring the chat as well. So questions in there will be answered while the video is playing. So questions so, in there uh, will be answered to while the video is playing. Live build with Zenla. So what we're looking to do today is I put a post so, about so we questions so, uh, that will be answered while the video is playing. Facebook build asking people with... for. Uh, their WordPress sites that they want to convert over to Zenla. So uh, I took a few of those sites. Uh, some are uh, more technical and I want to stay away from technical today. I want um, not to use any code. Anything is achievable inside Zenla. You can use JavaScript um, scripting in general and you can use um, code inside the site. So actually everything's possible to do but uh, we want to stay away from that. From the non-tech savvy side, you want to just take your WordPress site and do it over to Zendler. Now, why would you do this? Well, some of you might already have a WordPress site. You might be quite happy with that. And you might be running your blogs and uh, on your WordPress site. I'd be happy to have your courses on another site. But one thing you should definitely do is make sure the sites are looking the same or nearly the same. So there's no um, bad experience when someone's jumping from your main WordPress site into your Zenda site, especially if it's a subdomain. So I've done exactly the same for my site, Mojo Mojo, and I have a WordPress site and I have, but you wouldn't really tell the difference between the WordPress and the Zenda version of it. Um, they look pretty much the same. So you can get really, really close to what you're trying to do. Uh, there are some things we need to look at. I will be looking at these sites. We're going to start with uh, Mimi Quick's site. And she posted on there. She has a, a WordPress site. So uh, Mimi's uh, site is mimiquick.com. So I'm going to show that in a second. And um, it's quite, so I've, I've picked some of the, ones where I don't have to code so much. There was some in there that require quite a bit of coding inside them. Um, some of them you can lay a countdown tie to uh, timers that were spinning and things like that, which you can do. Um, you could easily do that with JavaScript or code. But um, 
I wanted to stay away from that. So probably what I would do is do a screen grab of that and just place it in there as an image for those kind of things, as that will become relevant later. So this is an extended live. I'm not going to rush. I'm going to just take my time with it and uh, just show you. Now, I'm going to be working kind of almost reverse engineering. So I'm taking a site that's existing. I haven't got any of the assets. Uh, so if you already have your assets, which you should if you created your WordPress site, it's going to be a lot easier for you because you've got all the assets. So I've actually got to grab the assets or cut them out from the site as I'm working. So kind of a reverse engineering uh, job from my side, but it's not a problem. OK, so I'm going to show you the first site. Um, guys, you know, jump into the comments. Uh, you can put comments in here if you want to. I'm not really going to be monitoring it too much because uh, I have to do the live build. So, but I will check through um, after each uh, live build and see what you guys have posted. So if you're interested in this sort of stuff, you know, if you're watching on the replay, give us a thumbs up with the replay, um, hashtag replay and let us know um, that you watched it and you found it of use. I know a lot of people are very interested in this sort of thing. So um, from that aspect, it's going to be quite good. All right. One thing to uh, just note here, I'm not going to be taking the header. I'm not going to be taking the footer. OK, it's because you're probably going to use a dynamic header and a footer in your site. So you just have to make that work for you. You could build it as well and then use that. But then you wouldn't be using a dynamic um, header. So I'm not going to be using the dynamic header for that, just so that you know. All right. So let's jump in, do a quick screen share of the first site that we're going to be looking at. And this is Mimi site. So we got Mimi here. And we got this image, and I would say with this image, it's very blurred. You want to be using a much higher resolution image for this. Just um, that's just telling you. So uh, Mimi obviously has been ABC, um, NBC, Fox, CBS. So you know, quite cool. Uh, we've also got on a uh, video here. Now I can see this video isn't on YouTube, so I'm not going to be grabbing the video. You can just insert your own. I'll just put a placeholder in there. Uh, we're going to be taking this text, but relatively, this is a really simple site to do, which is a nice one to start with. So we've got images here, a little bit of a um, word of advice with these uh, images as well, really should be the same height across here. This is just from my design point of view. So it comes across and ends there. So we'll probably be correcting things as we go. And we have social media at the bottom, which I probably won't put in because you've got them on the footer inside of the Zen of the site. But uh, the process that we're looking at here is blocks. So you know Zen the works in blocks. So there'll be a block for the header or the dynamic uh, menu system that you've got. Then there would be a block here and then a block here and so on so this block here could actually be one block right the way down right the way down so actually quite simple now guys if you are featured on this live build you can get in touch with me pm me and i will send you the block code so you can put this straight into your site because i'm going to be working on a little test site that we always use for this thing so in this case i'm going to be using my uh, good doggy site that i'm using for um uh sunday live uh, mentorship so i'm going to be going into the admin section of this uh, so you can just do it with your own now what i like to do is i like to go into the site and i like to go into pages and then i like to add a page because i don't want to be working on a live page especially if you've got a site and it's already got active live pages on there you want to be working and testing in a test environment so we're going to add a new page here and we're going to go and call this i'm going to call this mimi so i know and i'll just put mimi in here and I'm going to use a blank page. Um, I'm not going to publish the page and I'm going to say only visible for logged in users. This is just my precaution to stop people finding the page. If you haven't got it clicked to publish, they're not going to find it anyway. But I'm just taking an extra precaution and making it for logged in users only. So let's click add and then we're going to set up our base template. So our first thing that we're going to have in this, because it's going to give me my dynamic header, my dynamic footer, I'm going to delete those out. And just start fresh which is what we like to do. Um, I've also got a folder set up. I'll just show you that now. So I've got a folder and because this is the first site, site one, I'm just gonna label this Mimi. And this is where I'm gonna put all my assets that I download from uh, Mimi site here. So I'm gonna put them all inside this folder just to keep everything nice, clear and organized. The other thing that I'm gonna be doing as well is I'm gonna be using a Word doc and I'm going to be WordPad actually, and I'm going to be putting in some of the uh, fonts that she's using, sizes that she's using from the main site, some of the colors, just so it's easy for me to, re to get those back. So I'm gonna click in here, I'm gonna delete the header out. 
But guys, you've got your header, you're probably going to want to leave it in there. And I'm going to delete that bit out as well. So I've got basically, you remember, I've just got this empty thing. So remember, you can put those headers back in if you need to later. We've given you that ability inside here under the navigation. You can just grab that uh, dynamic navigation and you can drag it across if you want to. Uh, we're going to start nice and fresh with this. So I'm going to jump onto the site here and I want to capture this image here. And I also want to see the font she's using. So I'm going to capture this image. So generally in a page, you can right hand click and you can go down to inspector. And then it's going to give me my little inspector panel. And I'm going to go over this and see if I can grab this image. Sometimes you can't. And I don't think it's going to let me in this case, which is absolutely fine because I'm going to then use a different method. So I'm going to go and use, and remember, I've done no practicing on this site at all. So this is just me working now live. So I'm going to go and use a snipping tool that you've got inside of Windows. So you've got a similar thing for Mac. I'm not sure what it's called, but you can basically it's for grabbing anything on the screen. So if you just go on your little Windows bar at the bottom to, and you just search for apps, just put in there snip, snip, and then this snipping tool will come up. And all you need to do is click new and it's going to go all gray like this. And I'm going to grab from the edge here and I'm going to grab across to grab this image. So I'm going to grab across here. Now, obviously, you guys probably got your image already. Let go. And that's given me the image. So I'm going to call this hero. And um, because she looks like a hero, a superhero now, obviously as well, isn't she? So uh, save as. And we're going to put that into our, our thing. So with it live build session, me, me, I'm going to call this one hero. Okay. And click save. That's the first bit done. I'm going to save myself a lot of hassle here rather than download these individual items. I'm going to use the clipping tool again. I'm going to go to new and I'm going to clip this bit out here like that. And we'll go save as. And we're going to call this logos news, something like that. Click save. And snipping tool is really good because you can just grab it. So instead of a video, I'm going to just grab this bit here now. Let's just move that out of the way. Let's grab this little bit here. So you could download these or you can just grab it like that. So um, video placeholder. Okay, let's scroll down, see if there's anything else I need to grab. So that can all be made up. This is good. I'm going to use that tool again. And let's grab this. So I'm just basically just getting all my stuff together. Let's save this as Mimi. Okay. Down here, got some more stuff going on. I might better save this. I'm going to right hand click on this, save image. That's going to allow me to save it straight away. So and it's a JPEG, save that, right hand click this, save image as, and there we go. So you can't always save the image as, but most of the time you can, and that's it, I finished. So that's gonna give me all my assets now for that. So I've got those assets, that's my first thing to do. So now you've got a nice little folder full of your little assets that you've got, that you've just downloaded. You've got all these little bits in here, all ready to go. So the next thing I need to do is find out what font is being used. So I'm going to go into now WordPad because now I want to put down a sheet together telling me what fonts have been used and what size. So I've got WordPad open here and I'm going to call it heading font. So I might change the size a bit if it looks better in Zenla. And then I'll go body, which is like standard font. So I want to find out what this font is. So I've got that little word pad. I'm just putting that onto my other monitor. I'm going to right hand click, go down to inspect. Then I'm going to go to here, go over here. And I'm using Chrome, by the way. And I can see inside here that it's telling me that um, it's Baskerville. And I'm not sure I've got Baskerville in the Google fonts, but it's giving me a color as well. So I can take that color, which is here.
And in here, I'm going to put Baskerville. And color for the headings is this. And I'm going to jump to this now, which is crimson text, 17 point. Notice gives you all the details. And it's in black, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 is black uh, for that hexadecimal number there. So crimson text. It's 17 points and it's black, which is the hex number 0000000. 000 000 000 000. So that gives me quite a bit there already. Let me just check the size of this as well. The size of this is 29 pixels. So 29 pixels for Okay, and I think the sizes are all the same right the way through. That's slightly different there. That again is crimson, but that's 20 using that same color. Uh, that's giving me the hexadecimal for that color as well. So, which is kind of cool. Okay, it's the same color. Nine four seven eight three eight. FC. So I've just taken that hexadecimal number there. Yeah. So if you mouse over that, you can see that. Um, hash nine four seven three eight three three eight three eight eight three eight fc which is actually the same color as this or well, it looks like it's slightly different i'm going to leave it the same color because i think that works better i don't like to mix the colors so that color there is actually the hexadecimal color for the top as well so i'm going to take that and put that in there so I keep it the same. So I'm going to use two fonts here. This is the way that we can work. If you're not any good at designing, you want to keep your font types um, not too many in there, and you want to keep these consistent sizes. The sizes could change um, depending on a heading or a subheading, but that's enough for us to kind of work with this. So that's great. So let's start designing. We can do all these bits as we go. Right, so we can start designing this now. So we're going to start with the very top. So we've got this lovely big image here. So we're going to put this in. I want it to go full width, and I'm not going to do it as a background image. You're going to see why in a second. So what I want to do is I want to actually take this and I want to duplicate this block. I'm going to need two blocks for this. So I've got a block there and a block there. And with this block, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to drag this up so it's literally gone. So I've got nothing in that block. This is where the hero image is going to go into. I'm going to click inside here and I'm going to make this full width. So it go full width and I'm going to add a row. And inside that row, I'm going to do a one row, one column. And then I'm going to click add element and I'm going to go in and grab that hero image. So grabbing that, I'm going to upload a hero image. So let's go into here. Uh, upload without crop and there we go we got the first part done so that's the first part done and uh, we're going to be just polishing this now you're going to notice if we preview the, it at this stage um, it's going to let's just save and preview this it's not going to go right to the edge do you see that so we're going to make it go right to the edge by putting some negative values into this. So I'm going to click on the gear icon on the inside row. And for this, I'm also going to take the spacing away from the top and the bottom. And I'm actually going to go negative, which is going to push this up. Let's go negative 10 for now. And then right, I'm going to go negative 15. 
I might need to go a bit more than this, negative 15 that side. Let's click save. It's going to take me now a lot closer to this edge. See? So I can just now, I'm going to take this one now. So instead of using this row that we used last time, I'm now going to use this and I'm going to also add a negative. So I'm going to do any of the 10 and I'm going to do negative 10 left and negative 10 right. So you can put negative values on not just the images, but also the rows. Let's click save to that. And let's just check that. I think that'll do for now. Okay, so much better right near the edge. Good. Okay, and you can obviously do it a little bit more if you wanted to. Let's go to 20. And 20 there. Okay, save that. Right, good. Okay, so let's now jump into the main text. So we have this text running. As you notice, we did this full width. Um, I want to set this area full width, although we're not using full width. And I'm going to use a row to push it in. So I'm going to go down to the next block here. I'm going to click the settings. We're going to go full width, bang. And we're going to put a row in. And our row is going to be one, one row, one column, second column, third column. So I need three. So let's go in here, grab a three column, one row. Well, there we go. And the great thing about this is now I get this way of adjusting exactly how far out it goes. So I can put this in here and I can adjust it exactly how I want it to go. So perfect. So the first thing I need to do is put this text in. So as seen, so we're gonna drop in some text here. I'm gonna use, it's about the same size as that. Yeah, I'm gonna use H2. And we'll change the font. Now, guys, if you're setting up your site, remember that and you know what fonts you're using, like Baskerville for the uh, heading and Body Crimson, then you would make sure that you set those, if they're available, inside of your branding. So you would go to branding and then you would go down to down here and you would select the heading font as Baskerville. And this one is Crimson, um, but you can choose the font style. And you can also go around down here and you could change these colors as well if you wanted to. So inside the body. So you've got these colors that you can add. I'm not going to change them because this is on a live site. So let's go in here and let's just set this now. So I don't know. I don't think Baskerville is available in here. It might be. Uh, we've got Libra Baskerville, which is pretty similar. Okay, going to use that. And I'm going to use that color now. So I've got a size for this, 29. So I'm going to put 29 into here. It's not far off 29 anyway. And I'm going to choose that color. Remember that color we picked from the page? I'm going to copy that. And we're going to put that in here. So I'm going to select inside here. Put that in there. Oops, that's not the right color. Oh, it's jumping around. Okay, guys, let's just choose one. Pretty good. This is where you can get really fiddly with this stuff. Yeah, I like that. Uh, once you've set it in here, just make sure that you update that in the document. Okay, so that'll be a new color. Right. Good. All right. So that one's done. So now what we need to do is we need to add in this uh, logos down here. So we're going to do that. And I'm going to give myself a bit of control here. So I'm going to add a new element. 
And I'm actually going to go in and I'm going to put a row in a row. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to put three in here. So let's go in here. I'm going to make this a bit bigger. So let's go right to the end of this. Let's add an element. So this is a row inside a row. And we're going to go and grab that image and we're going to go and grab that um, logo there. Okay, upload with that crop. There it is. Just going to click save to this and preview what we've got so far. And there we go, we're starting to form it. So next one here. Now we have two columns here because we've got this placeholder. So I'm going to be setting up two columns. So you can basically, as you're working with these things, you can build them, you know, you can build it out. So I'm going to click this in a row. I'm going to add a new row and this row is going to be two columns, probably going to be that one. And we're going to put that placeholder for this in here. So let's go and grab that. Let's go add element. No, you would be putting your video in here, Mimi. So you would go to video, then you would either upload your video or you'd use embed code if it was on YouTube or something. But I'm going to be using a placeholder, so I'm going to be using images here. So that's the reason I've used images. So I've got that placeholder. I'm going to click open. We're not going to crop it because we've taken it from the website. Everything's the right size. And bang, that's in there. It's a bit small, a bit bigger on the site. Not bad. Okay, and I'm going to add text element now because we're starting to break into the page. So we've got this heading bit here, which I'm going to use, copy, copy. Uh, let's go in here, grab an H1 again, or H2, sorry. We're going to change that to that Baskerville. And it's on that side. So I'm going to go over to here. Uh, it will save that last color you picked as well, which saves you a lot of hassle. Uh, open this up, type in here, Basque. I'm going to go for this Libra Basque. And I also want to align it left because that's what you've done and of course it is 29 so let's have a look at yours so yep second line down it's all good okay so next bit to grab is going to be this text so i might have to break this text onto two lines i'll take the whole text to start with copy this Okay, and we're going to add a text element now. So let's go to text. So it's just the case of just building it all up. Um, if you guys saw uh, any of the other live builds that I've done, you'll, you'll know this. And if you watched um, Aaron on A Day with Zenla, then he works in a similar way. He plans it out on a piece of paper, but that's because he's doing uh, brand new site builds and not copying someone else's site. So I'm going to now put that text into here. I'm going to do some line breaks. So I've got right place. And this font is crimson. And you're going to see in a minute, I'm going to start to duplicate the font, the blocks out. So it saves me doing it again. I'm not sure if crimson is available in here. Oh, there we go. Crimson text. Perfect. And this is 17 points. So she's put it in 17. Remember, when I'm not making these numbers up, I grabbed them from the site earlier. And it is in black, so I don't need to touch that. Uh, you're going to notice that this runs on a little bit lower than this. So I'm going to take this. In fact, what I'll do just to make it better is I'm going to take all of that. I'm going to duplicate this out and delete out this whole piece here. And I'm going to come down to the bottom row here. I'm going to create a new row. This is going to be one row. I'm going to take this now and drag this down. This is a great thing about 
Zenla. You can just move and drag things around um, to get placement a little bit better. So let's go up. Okay, that looks good. And the other thing I'd like to do is I make, make sure this image and uh, aligns with the top of this. So if I grab this in a row and I go to the settings, I can vertically align it to top. So you see this vertical alignment? If I click top, it's all gonna jump to the top like that, which looks a lot better. So that's now looking quite nice in there. I'm gonna save that. This is a little bit low inside here, but I'm gonna knock it up in a minute. Let me just go to this row. Bring this up a bit. Okay, and I could even enter a negative value to push it even closer. So I think it's really good. You've got the ability to hit negative values in there. Uh, so that's how it looks. That's not bad. Let's just have a look at it now. And there we go, we're starting to build. So back into here. And we got a smaller text in this. I'm going to add this to that block. So let's go and take this. That in there. Right hand click. Sometimes you have to do this right hand click to inspect, and you're just inspecting this. So this is still the crimson text, but it's 20. So I'm selecting it, going to pick that same color. Remember, and this is where this document really comes in handy. So I can put that in there, click OK. And that should have changed the color, yes. Going here, now I'm gonna to go to the font size here. I'm gonna select 20. Um, Rakesh, if you're watching this, this is a little bit of a bug here where it's pushing off the screen with the lowest block. So I've put that into 20 there, you can see. So, which is exactly the same size as that. So the next bit we have, this is where things move a little bit quicker because I've got all my blocks so I can just simply grab stuff. So I'm gonna copy that, I'm go into here, I'm gonna duplicate it, and we're gonna to start to move with this stuff. So let's grab this little move, drop that down there, replace it with that text. It's on one line there, it's not on one line here. So I might have to make, I want it on one line. So sometimes it's obviously the spacing isn't exactly right both sides. So I can just do that and get it right. If I go 27 or 28, it's going to be there. So it's like that's better. So it should be 28. So I'm going to make sure that all my blocks are 28 now. And then I'm going to update that master sheet. So this is where we're tweaking it just to make it work uh, with Zenla and with the blocks that we set up. So in there for the heading, I'm gonna make sure that I change that to 28. Okay, and this is how you do it. Just build it up as you're going through. So I've got a little bit of information here. Let's go and grab this one and duplicate it. And we're gonna throw this down the bottom. Drop. Grab this text, copy. Right. And we've got a prosperous mindset now. 
Now we just build it out. Good. Got to duplicate this block. Oops. Oh, I've already put it in there. Well, they're going crazy. <laughs> right. Okay. So align your subconscious, align your subconscious mindset. I've got this. Good. Back to here, money. There we go. And we've got some bold text in here as well. Dissolve hidden subconscious beliefs. Okay, so I'm selecting that text. A little box will come up. I can click that, make it bold. Okay, so now we've got business relationships. So I'm going to duplicate these out a few times. So when we do a live build, guys, uh, we just work on the home page. The home page is usually the most complex page. Um, so I don't generally work through the whole site. Um, I use the same methods to work through the same site. But for the live builds that I do for you guys, um, I don't show you all the pages and linking it up because it would kind of be a mute point um, because they would all follow the same kind of styling as the home page. So there's actually no point in doing that. It would really just be a waste of time. I'm sure you guys would love it because someone would be building your site from scratch, but um, we, do, we don't do that as in the, um, So just so you know, if you do get asked to come on to live builds, I just realized that's, that's kind of how we work. You can choose a, a page yourself. If you've got a complex page, maybe on the WordPress site, and you want to convert that across and you want to know how to do it, then of course, you know, we can do it per page. It doesn't have to necessarily be the home page. Or you might, like we've done live builds where we've actually done um, technical issues that are actually wrong with the site. Um, and we've shown how to, how to fix those. Um, last week we did, but look, well, two weeks ago i think we did one for a competition winner and um that was showing how to set up a kind of form to capture leads so it doesn't necessarily have to be on a complete site but you think you know so i'm going to grab this one next there's a lot of text in here but i'm getting to the end of it but this is doesn't take too long you know you can just leisurely work your way through it as long as you save it out do remember to save it out as well guys i've done this before i've worked for a whole site not saved it out and um then it's my internet's gone or something's crashed and i've lost all that work so it's a really good idea that you uh, actually save as you're working through things when you think oh god that was a tricky area to do then um just save it <laughs> because it does happen you know it happens with any site wordpress or any site that you're on 
So we got this one here. And Oops, done that twice. You can kind of lose yourself when you're working on these things. Okay. Oh, it's that block. Okay, okay. Right. Just want to get rid of this block because it's a duplicate. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. I could just drag that down and use it later, but I, I tend to try and work very linear when I'm working, like one bit at a time. That way it just stops mistakes happening. If I started duplicating all these and dropping them all in, you can sometimes get lost. Um, if it's your site, you don't tend to get lost with it. But if you're working as a website designer on someone's site, it doesn't really mean anything to you. I'm not reading all this wording. I'm just going through the motions of putting stuff in. So you can easily just sort of lose it and just have text in there that you haven't deleted out. It doesn't refer to it um, because you're just basically going through the motions of doing this stuff. So that's why I kind of work in this very linear way from top to bottom. It just means you will make less mistakes. So, you know, I haven't checked the chat yet, but I'm going to just finish this bit and then I'll have a quick check of the, of the chat. Um, hopefully you're picking up some tips here, uh, you know, especially important to have a look, get all the images together. Make sure you've got a little document with your sizes like we have, and uh, that's going to help you as well. So these are key things and it doesn't matter what you do, whether, you, you know, you're building um, this from a Squarespace site, a Wix site, whatever. The same principle can apply. You know, you look at the site, break the site down into blocks. <clears throat> think about the, the rows inside that and how that's going to, you know, how that will convert into a Zen of the site. And then you will be set. It's, it's really that easy. I'm not, I'm not having to do anything complicated here. Um, it sometimes it's actually quite nice to just take someone's uh, WordPress site and convert it into into another site. Like I've done conversions from WordPress to Squarespace, Wix to Squarespace, Wix to WordPress. You know, WordPress to Zenla, Wix to Zenla. Um, it's all the same method. You just go through it block by block, and you do what the system allows you to do. So I'm just repeating the same thing here, guys, but I'm going to do it because it is a full build on this page. So I'm sorry if it's boring because I know it is at the moment because I'm just repeating. So if you want to get a coffee or something, come back. I should be finished in 10 minutes or so. So this is the health section. So I'm going to grab the text from that. And save myself a bit of time, I'll just duplicate that block. Uh, for some reason, my machine is screaming at me. You can hear the fan going, doesn't normally happen. All right, getting down the bottom now. So that this is a bit in here. So I'm going to paste that in there, jump back to here, grab this, copy, back into here. And here we go. So we got this last bit here. And I think I can use that block. It's the same type. Okay, 
that's good. Right, this is 20, it's the same size as I had before, so I can take the font size here. Change the color. All right, let's save that out. Uh, let's just do a quick refresh. So that all looks nice. So if we're comparing it at this stage, at the top down to the bottom, and you're going through it, and you compared it to this, you wouldn't really see, unless you trained eye, you wouldn't really see that there's a difference in the site. And that's how you can do it, really easy. So the next thing we need to do is put in this kind of button. So I need to right hand click and find this button color out. So I'm gonna use that um, inspector again. Remember guys, I'm using Chrome, right hand click, go down to inspect, it's going to bring this box up. You'll probably have it docked in a corner. I have mine separated out. Click this little icon here, go over this, and we should be able to find out the color of this. There it is there. I can see that color. I'm going to copy that color, and I'm going to put that in here. So I'm now going to put button and in here. And you can put that in your branding setting, settings as well. So I think we have a Sinzel. They've the font type for this is Sinzel and it's 14 point. So I'm going to grab all that, copy it, paste it into the button here. It's actually the code for it. So that's going to save me a lot of trouble. All right, let's go. Oops. So work with me, me quick in the new group. Right, let's put a button in here. All right. New element button. How big is her button there? It's quite big. So I want to choose that background color for this. That's the color that I took just now when I used the inspector. So I'm going to be taking that color. I don't want it to have a border. So I've got border turned, border thickness. Let's put that zero. Um, let's put this background color into this new color that I've got which we just grabbed. There we go. That's nice. Uh, I want to use that font, which was Sinzel. Not sure if we've got it in here. Oh, there it is. So that's nice. Got Sinzel. Uh, the weight of that was 14 pixels. Remember, we grabbed that using the inspector just now. That's nice. And I don't want it to have it full width. Okay. And now I want to put what it says. So I'm going to go up to the top of that button. This would link through, I'm guessing, to that form page that you just saw. So under the settings, settings here, I want to put in what she's written. So work with Mimi Quick in the new group. program ask for more info here uh, 
and there we go. So I just want to have a look. It all looks good. Okay, those borders, those little radius are less than mine. Mine are a bit more. So I'm going to go in here and just take that border radius down very slightly. So I've got a border corner radius here of four, but I think it should be like three. And of course, you remember guys, you have this ability in here to reduce this down as well. You've got padding around this stuff. So I always like to put about 10 in here, 10 or eight. And that to me looks better. Mind you, Mimi's got more, so let's put it back to 15. Okay, click save. So this would link through to another page. So you know, guys, with buttons, go in here, click the little gear icon, go to settings, and you can choose an action. So where that goes to, you could have it open a pop-up pop form, um, go to a link where you'd normally have a form or something like that. Uh, so that's done. So I'm going to click that, and we're going to check that out in the preview. And there we go, looking nice. I'm going to jump into the chat and see what's going on. All uh, right, so we've got right, so we've got L Y, got Sandy, got Kathy in here, um, fantastic. Yeah, that's cool yeah you're loving it so um david will be able to see the recording yes you will it's here um i also download it and put it on the youtube channel as well so it goes on the live builds so it'll be in there so i didn't know about negative values yeah negative value is really powerful for pushing stuff right to the edge so you can have this real control over it if you're using negative values one little pointer check the site works in a mobile all right which we're going to look at in a second so let's have a look at this in mobile just while i said that i'll just have a look at it in the mobile view so up here you can go and you can check it in a tablet or a mobile so we're looking at how it looks in a mobile so you can see that doesn't look as good um, but we could replace that and that's probably a little bit too much so i'll bring that up there um, it doesn't give you a true preview like this because you see these rows they don't actually appear but it's looking nice you know that's centered nicely and all that stuff so um in a tablet it looks slightly better still that side that looks good and then we've got desktop there so you have that ability in there to change that i'd probably maybe make this a bit wider maybe It's probably going to give me a bit too much space there. So I probably grab this. So this is where you can change things a bit to make it suit what you want it to. So if I take this, I can drag this under here. Oops. And I could come in here and just bring this up a bit. That to me looks better, you know? Um, so you can change things around as you're working with it. This is too big now in here, but of course we have this ability to go in here and change this in. Also, just as a tip, if you click the image, you can actually drag the image in as well. So you've got that ability to drag that image in. And you've also, if it's a bit too close to this area, which in this case it is, I could click on the row and then I could set a little bit of bottom space on this to push it down. So you see you got that infinite control over things. I'll probably bring this up a bit so it's closer to there. And I'd probably bring this up a little bit as well here and then click save. But you can see how you can alter it really quickly and it's looking nice. Let's have a look at it now with that new margin set in there. So yeah, there's a lot of text on this page, but uh, this is a text heavy site. So let's move on now to this. So we've got a line these. So I've got a different font happening here. I don't tend to like mixing too many fonts around, uh, but this font does go, I think, with this font. Uh, don't know if it does, but let's see. Uh, so I'm going to take this and we're going to drop this in. So now we have this section here, which has got one, two, three, four blocks. 
Uh, so I'm going to be putting one block in underneath and then I'm going to do a block of four. So you're going to see that happening now. So inside this box, inside this block, I'm going to add in a new thing. In fact, you know what? Let's just make life easy. Let's just take this and just drop this in. Um, I don't know. You're seeing me working on this. I don't know if a lot of you are actually using the duplicate block, but you're actually going in and making all your blocks up yourself. Um, so you can see, look, but just by duplicating some of the blocks, you can really speed your workflow up. Uh, these are just pro tips that I do automatically when I'm doing things. Um, so really pay attention to those kind of real time saving uh, tips that can um, just you know, just make it so much easier for you. So down the alignment here, this is centered. So I'm going to center this. It is also in that color. So I'm going to put it into that color. And Mimi's picked for this, actually it's in black. Um, all right, so I'm going to inspect this and I'll put it into black. So she's picked um, open sands for this. So this is an open sands. It's 1A, 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 but I'm going to leave it black. So let's go and choose open sands. So that's our third font choice for this site. So we've got open sands, we can type that in there. And I think it's a bold, and I'm going to pick this black here. And I think it's more boldy. Let's go and choose semi bold. Okay, something like that. Okay, now the good bit. We're going to get on to doing the buttons now that, that Mimi's got here. So uh, this is good. This is nice, easy one for us to do. We're going to go in now and we're going to create a new row under this row and click in here. And I'm going to go for four. There we go. And inside each of these, I'm going to stick the button. So we're going to click in here. I'm going to do one button and we can just use the same button. We can just duplicate it and send it out. Again, this really saves time. So we're going to go in there. We're going to click the little gear icon. We're going to go across to design variations and notice we have all these different design types that you can have. So I'm going to go outline box because that's what we've got. And I'm going to start to fill out what it says. So it says business in there. And then we've got that same goldy copper color. So let's go into here going to settings i'm going to put business business and we're going to choose that color that we have border color might make that border thickness too that's quite good um, i'm going to use open sands i'm not sure what you've used for that looks like open sands i'm going to use open sands so let's go in here it's a bit thinner That's not too bad. And now we're going to turn it into a kind of a square. So I have it full width in there and I'm going to put it to normal and I'm going to go into here now and we're going to just add some padding. Whoa, not that much. And make it more square, that's better. So if I put 80 in there, I think that'll be good. What does that look like? Hmm. Font's a bit bigger. Looks like it's a bit of a lighter color as well. So I might choose a lighter color. I think I'm gonna change this to like 32. Yeah, and I'm gonna choose a slightly lighter color. And I'm going to look at this. Yeah, it's darker in there. I think I like it dark around the outside. I know Mimi chose the same color, but you know, we want to make it slightly different. 
and we got that color there. So that's that new brighter color. Okay, so that's a button uh, that we could um, add an action to. So I'm gonna duplicate that button out and we're gonna take that and we're gonna put it into this block here. So bang, it goes into here. And another one, let's take that, put it into there. Money coaching spiritual. Okay, uh, one last thing. I'm going to put this back to full width. Uh, reason this is being a different length inside here. So if I make it full width, it's going to go straight to the size of that um, column block. So let's go width, full width. And let's make sure we do it with all of them. It's easy to miss this when you're looking at it and you go, oh, well, that looks right now. And then you don't bother doing it to the others. And then you look at it on a mobile and it's all different sizes. So you need to check things are consistent when you're working them. So I've done these, these buttons quite a bit wider in height than um, Mimi's site. And I quite like it to stand out. But of course, you know, you can change that padding and reduce that padding down if you want to. It's up to you. Remember, this is our Zenla version of a WordPress site. So we're going to have a look at this now. Um, just make sure you keep saving. And we've got this. So these are buttons that you could tie to. And this is Mimi's here, slightly smaller. Now we've got this block. So this block's going to be nice and easy to do. Uh, you bright guys probably already work out what we're doing. So if you want to put in the chat, what are we going to do? How many, how many columns are we going to use for this? How many rows? Two columns, one row. So uh, that's how we're going to do it for this. And then we're just going to break it away like we did the last bit. So, you know, not brain surgery. It's uh, pretty easy stuff. We're going to go into rows now. And we're going to go in and grab that row. So we've got a 3366 there. And I'm going to grab that lovely image that we've got. So I'm going to go add element, go into images, and upload me, me there. Now remember, you know, I know like we take we, what it's taken us about an hour so far to put this together. But guys, remember, like if you've got the home page set, you can duplicate this out or you can save blocks off. You know, you could save this whole block and use it in another page, then alter the way it looks and you'll be a lot quicker with it. And um, so it's, you know, it's not um, it's not too bad once you get into it. So let me now duplicate this. I'm going to drag this into this block. So I'm going to grab this here. This is what I love to grab these blocks. Oh, a little tip for you here as well. If you can't see the block to drag it into, what you can do is press control on the keyboard, hold the control click minus, it will make this reduce down, which means that you're gonna see this. Now it might go a bit weird, but it just means that you can see this little grab block. So then you can grab it down here and let go of it. And to reset the page to back, back to what it was before, press the control key, hold the control key and hit zero on the keyboard. And that's a little shortcut for being able to grab these blocks. So one thing I can see is I need it all top aligned. So I'm going to click in the row that we created here. And we're going to just click this little gear icon. Is Mimi here? I don't think she is. She'll be surprised, won't she? Um, right. So that's that bit there. So we've got a different size going on here uh, for this. And she's put this at 20, so that's all right. Uh, this is italicized. So I'm going to grab some of this text. Just flick out that.
I'm actually going to use this. I know this is the right size. Do me. Uh, right, I'm going to show you another little tip as well. I'm going to show you another little tip. Hold on, let me just. You hold on for this. You're going to like this one. This little tip I'm going to show you is you might have had this happen and gone. Why does it do that? And I'm going to show you something that will really help you. So if I put this down here, um, if we go and drop text in. So if I copy this text, you can see that this text here. I want to copy this and I know that it's in this size and this color. And um, what a lot of people do is they select all the text and then they paste it where they want it to go. And it doesn't take on the properties of this size or this color. So my little tip to you, and this is a great one, is select the text right up to the last F, but not all of it. So not that last bit. Now paste in and it won't work. <laughs> that was my tip. <laughs> I love it when it's live. Normally, it will take on the attribute of that, and uh, if you do it, if you don't delete it all out, but it didn't work. So, <laughs> so scrap that, scrap that tip. Maybe I can show it to you later when we're working with something else. Um, right? <laughs> okay. I love it when we're live. Right. So I'm going to grab that color again. And I'm going to have to set it to 20. All right, let's go and grab this. So I'm going to grab this bit. We've got little bits going in. So there's paragraph breaks going in here. And um, it's italicized as well. Okay, because we made it wider, I think I can fit this paragraph in. Okay, let's just italicize this. So I'm going to select it, go to italic. There we go. So I'm just checking how it looks, just if I want to make a change. That looks good. Okay. Right.
So when you're doing your WordPress conversions as well, just think, um, you know, can I make it better? Because you're working through your site and you have all this control, um, probably in some cases more control than you've got in your WordPress site. So it means you can really, really change things minutely like the images and the rows and the columns um, that you find it much, much harder to do inside of things like WordPress. So it's definitely worth when you do your site to just try and make it that little bit better than you had before. Uh, I think it's, um, it's at that point where you can do that. So um, why not? So let's put that into there. Oops, sorry. Okay. Um. So I'm going to do something different with this bullet points that we've got coming up, because I think we can make it look better than that. I select all this text, which is all in italic. And that looks good. Okay. Um, so we got bullets one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, I'm just seeing if I could align it better. Right, I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to put two rows. So I'm going a little bit different to the site now, just because I think it's going to look better this way. And uh, probably won't, but let's see. And inside here, I'm going to add a list element. Right, do you notice how you can change the icon as well? You can go in there and change that icon over, and I can change that color of that icon in there as well. I'm not quite sure how I copy, if I create another list there. Ah, there you go. Uh, not use the list icon list before inside here, so always good to do it live, isn't it? 
Right. Let's use that crimson text. Maybe I'll change it. There we go. And I'll duplicate it. And I think this will look better. Although these bullet points are quite big. Uh, I like to preview, just check it. I saw this alignment was slightly out, so I'm just trying to make it a little bit bigger um, inside there. So it doesn't look too bad. Hmm. This is where, you know, you have to make a decision whether you want to. So I'm going to take that block there where it ends on that sentence and I'll add it in there. better yeah so um don't be afraid to play around with it just to get it, everything sort of perfect um that's what you should be doing uh, right so we got that so we're gonna have got this bit here so we're gonna put another row in uh just one more row in here i think at the end so i'm gonna go down to Let's choose this. That's better. Okay. Uh, when I grab that button, so we've got a duplicate button. Uh, this is sometimes a pain because you've got to grab this and sort of move it down. Uh, so I just sort of grab it in little chunks and move it down. Uh, down like, oop, let's grab this, move it down here. Okay, join the Facebook group.
And then we have this bit here, nice and easy. So I'm going to make this, I'm not going to make it italic. I'm just going to put it in like this and I'm going to change a few of these little bits in here. I'm just going to make this bold, just so it pops a little bit more. I probably make more of a feature of this because there's quite a lot of call to actions in here. Um, I would probably, I'm going to do something here, just different to what Mi Mimi's got. So I'm going to put that in there. Duplicate this. And I'm going to align it left and for this particular one i think i'm going to change it a little bit this is where i'm going off of what uh, the wordpress site's got but i just think it'll look better Probably make that much bigger, but I'm going to leave it as it is. So next we're going to have that and we're just going to put that into an italic in there. But you can see that I think that looks better. It's, it's more of a call to action than that little click through. So let's have a look at that. Just have a look. See. Yeah, it looks better. So a lot better than just having it in there. I'm sure you'd agree, you know. Um, so now we've got two links here. Uh, two images here. So with images, you need to make sure that your sizes are okay. I'm going to use what she's got, but um, for these two images that we have, they are different sizes. So this side is different to this size. So when you're doing these images and they're going in a page and they're side by side, specifically when they're side by side, you want to make sure that same height. So you've used some sort of software to resize the images, making sure they are the same size. Now we can change it a little bit inside the platform, but generally it's best if you actually do it manually yourself uh, before you bring it in. So I need two blocks. I need one row, two, um, two columns. So I'm going to put that in there now. So really easy. I'm going to come into this block here, set a new row for that up. And I'm just going to have two. Now I'm going to have it as four columns because I don't want it to take up the whole room of there. So if I put four in now, I can just put the image in the middle part. So let's go in and grab the first image, which I think is that one there. Okay, and um, we're going to grab the next one now. So I've got this one here. So I'm going to go to the image. And once again, we're going to upload that. 
and that's that one there. Uh, this is a bit bigger, but it should be all right because we're contained within that um, block. So you can see it's a little bit different size. So I'm going to get this and I'm just going to bring this down. Pretty good. Right, let's add a new element. I'm going to add some text. You can see this text. Um, oh, I can duplicate this. Let's take that text and duplicate it. Again, I probably use a little image, a little button in here just underneath if you want people to click on it. And uh, that's going to be good. Now, these are different heights at the moment. So to make them all level, we're just going to go into our settings, go down to vertical alignment, click top and bang. That's correct. So let's click save to that. And then we've got that kind of thing happening. And then the last bit is we got down here and that will bring us to the end of this. So let's take this, let's make a new one final. Row. Oops. Oh, by the way, if you do accidentally create a double column, you can right hand click, go over the row, right hand click and go delete column. And let's go delete. And there you go. It clears it out. So a little trick. So duplicate that. Finally, put this in here. Change the text. Make it regular. Save it out and job done. Okay, so there we go. So she's got a lot of space in here, but remember you could, you could put space in here. You could set some more spacing. Oops. Um, sorry, you could click the handle and grab it across. Like that. And then you could say spacing left like that if you wanted to i quite like it with that that's going to be a better size i think so i think if i bring this image down here it's got to get what feels right really i'd probably put this into this row just so it's under both and then I center it because I'm sure that both the images you can click through to. So with it in this site, just under this image, but it would be under both of them. So I would write a line like that. And like I said to you, you didn't even need to put that in there. If you just got one of these and duplicated it out, this is where you can make things better than you've got. So if I then put that under there, I then got a nice click through. Of course, I can center that and go into the center settings for this and center it, you know, and then duplicate it and then link it up under there as well. And then I haven't got to put click on image. It would be a call to action there, which would make people more likely to make people to um, click on it than just the text alone. So if we look at this now, we got this, which is much nicer because you click under it. So that is how we can do all that main content for the page. Um, yeah, obviously, like I was saying, big things to take away from this 
this image here should be a nice big high resolution image it's really blurry and the site itself looks really good and clean but this really spoils it for me you need to get a better it's a good image i just it just needs to be much higher quality uh, image if you're going to use it for full width so it's really important for you guys to sort of take away from this uh, that sort of thing so you can set up the menu you just have to use the standard zen large you can then just use text in there or you can take a screen grab of that image and you can upload it as your image in the site that's how you can do uh, mimi site Okay, guys, so uh, that was quite a long one. That was about an hour and 27 minutes. And that was a live build showing you how to use WordPress, um, how to actually take a WordPress site and convert it into a Zenda site. So you can see it does take a bit of time. Um, with Mimi's site, there was quite a few different elements. So it was quite a little bit difficult. There's lots of fonts and things to choose from. Obviously, if you're basing it on it, you can work a lot quicker just inside the platform itself. But this way of building things up is a really important part of um, um, actually building anything inside of any platform. It follows the same principles of making sure that you have your colors, your fonts, and your media ready so you can start to put them in the site. So what we're going to do now is I just want to show you our YouTube channel here. So if you go to our YouTube channel, that's youtube.com forward slash c forward slash Zenla. And you want to look at more of our live builds, you know, at your leisure. You're going to see inside here, we have Mimi Quick's one. We had Sylvia join us at the end there. There's no one was watching for a while because it is a big, big video. You know, it's a lot, a lot to take in. Um, definitely there are some key tips in there that you should be looking out for but if you want to watch any of these live builds and they all basically are on different things people have asked for different things to be done um they're in here but mimi's ones is in here and you'll see that there's quite a few here that we've already done for our users um luna's one's quite good as well that was a i think it was a squarespace site but the principle um, would apply there. So just have a look at some of these. There's quite a few live builds we've got going on here. Um, and it shows you how that process of doing stuff as well and looking at different things. Uh, we got a live build here from John Orion. And actually at the end of it, so it's a ukulele site. And he actually plays a song at the end, which is very cool. So these were recorded live stream straight into our Facebook group. OK, so with that said and done, we're going to jump into what I like to call the mind bending session. So this is going to round up. We've got half an hour to go uh, before to six o'clock, but we're actually going to extend it by half an hour. We've got some we've got a pre-recorded content again. This one is a lot snappier. So this uh, one, I'm going to show you lots and lots of tips and tricks um, on using Zenla. Now, I realize that it's now 530. So actually, the live stream starts to come alive and you guys are starting to sort of turn up for it maybe you've had your dinner or you're watching it with your dinner and those sort of things if you're based in europe so uh welcome all welcome william and welcome sylvia i answered one of william's questions in the facebook group a minute ago whilst the recording was going but i think you're going to love this one it's really um there's a lot going on it's pretty action-packed they're all kind of great tips that you can use to modify your site um so um just take this this is actually from our London from our um, live Sunday mentoring workshops and this one was quite good we wanted I wanted to show quite a few different tips and tricks uh, that you can do inside Zenla so I thought it'd be a great one to kind of end the show on so I'm going to jump straight into that now again you've got any questions drop them in the chat I'm still here so I can answer your questions um, as you uh, watch this one so we've got great tips coming up and it's going to display now and that will wrap up a second session with a day with Zendler. Enjoy. All right, so what I wanna look at today is the fact that you don't have to use dynamic blocks. Now, we all love dynamic blocks because they self-fill self like this block here. So when you add a new course or membership, it just appears down the bottom. And there's quite a few places where dynamic blocks are used, such as in the header, uh, you can have a dynamic menu system so that when you add a new menu item, it adds to it as well. But 
you don't you're not restricted to use these it's just if you want to so let's go and first of all just create our own blocks to go in for here to actually put send people to the correct place so like any block that you make yourself you can just use links that are actually in there so instead of sending people to the sales page like this anxiety one i could if i wanted to send them straight to the checkout page and this is something that a lot of people like to do straight away the only problem is this we do set a sales page up to give people more information on the particular course and that's why it's good so if you are going to send someone straight to the checkout page just make sure that there's enough information on that button that you set up that they get enough information so that they can go straight to checkout so this is essential so i'm going to just jump into the site now and we're just going to look at the home page and we're going to create some of our own blocks that are going to lead to the three courses and or the two courses and the one membership that i've got in there for it so i'm going to go to site and then i'm going to go to pages so inside here i'm going to find the page that is uh, for our home page which is generally the home page down there. This I've created a new one. So I've got to go and find that new page and then I can open it up and then I can start working on it. Okay, so I'm flicking the page up. Now, also, I want to just point out that I do have a separate home page set up for uh, both logged out and logged in users. This is the logged out users and this is the logged in page so i do actually have two so when i'm looking at the good doggy training site uh, from an admin point of view i'm going to see a different page so you need to be aware of this look i can go into here and it says welcome back but actually the logged out page which i view in incognito mode is a little bit different and we did initially set up some of these buttons to go straight to those particular areas so i'm actually going to delete that block out now we're going to create our own so i'm now on the logged out page and i have this block down here already so i'm going to replace that let's go and replace that block sorry it's here so i can set this up to go straight into here so i've got this um membership here i've got this anxiety training as well some of these i switched off um so i'm just going to go and check my courses now and just see that they're all live so i think it's the training yes so two and this is these ones are part of the membership plan there so i've got two live sites standalone courses and then i've got my clones which add to this so that's good so i know that now so i just need to make sure so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come in here and i can still use this as a block but what i'll do is i'll start from um scratch so i'm just going to delete this out and then we'll create some cool blocks that are going to go straight through so i've got my mission statement there i might want to move that down so i'm just going to go in i'm going to grab an empty block and just drop that in there and i'm going to do one but i'm going to do it sort of line by line so i'm going to start with something like my membership site so i'm going to put in here um a sort of 25 75 in here and i'm going to drop the image for that course in there so i'm going to go down to the courses this will be the membership one so i need to find my membership logo uh, and drop that into the correct one so it's actually this one here this um membership site here so i might need to upload it again no problem i can go and find that on my computer and upload it and here it is here so i think that includes maybe that one or oh, that one's quite good let's use that one i'll just upload without crop there i know it's the right size it's going to drop in there nicely i'm going to take this little row click it once and then i'm just going to drag it make that a bit bigger so now i can add my text into here so i'm just going to simply do that i'm going to grab some heading text here and i'm going to call this uh good doggy training site okay so i've got that nicely in there uh, I also want to align it all by the top. So I'm going to take this row, I'm going to go into the gear icon and I'm going to say vertical alignment top. You're going to see it all jump up then. That looks a lot better. So now I can go into this and I can just put some of my text in there for this particular one. I'm going to leave it as the Lorium text for now. And uh, so you get the idea. And then I'm going to just drop a button into here as well. So I'm going to go in here, 
grab a button and this is the important part this is where it links through to so i'm going to change my button style in here probably go to maybe a rounded button something like that and just change this a little bit i'm going to come down to the button style and i'm going to put it normal okay i don't want it full width i'm also going to change the font size a little bit just put it down to something like uh 16 and maybe make it bold as well in here and that's good and i might change this and make the button white and the text in here this blue color to match the background of there uh, something like that again you can style this any any way you like i'll make this button text a little bit bigger in here maybe 18. okay good and then i'll change the padding here which is 15 so i'm just going to make it a little bit less let's just make it eight and i'm going to change the width of the border here to something like four so it's a bit thicker and i've got a border color i'm going to choose a nice bright blue for that border color there we go and i might give it a little bit of spacing as well um, or a little bit of padding in here. I might change this to 60 and 60 in here. So it's a bit of a longer button. Okay, so that looks good. So now I'm gonna just go in and just add a few little bits to make this block look really cool. So I'm gonna go in here to a background image and I'm gonna choose one of our dog pictures so you can upload your own. So I've got my little dog picture in there. Um, I don't like that one, I'm gonna go for this one. And I'm actually gonna change the background overlay and make it white. So it just sort of knocks it back. And I'm gonna change the position of that image as well. At the moment it's top left. So I'm gonna do it top uh center 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 something like that that's good and then i'm going to change this and just bring it up so now the important bit of course is to make sure this button is linking through to the right course so i can easily do that by jumping into my course you can find my membership course which is a bundle there it is and i'm going to jump into that i'm going to go to the pages and now you can send people to the sales page or I could send them straight to the checkout page. So send them straight to the checkout page. I'd use this or this. You don't want to send them to the course access or the thank you page because these are private pages. All right. Until they bought it, they're not going to be able to get into these pages. It's only this sales page or checkout page you want to think about. So if I want to send them straight to checkout page, I copy this. I'm going to send them to the sales page. So I'm going to copy that link. Notice it says URL copied. Then I'm going to come into the button here and I'm going to jump and open the little um, icon here. And where under the settings, I'm going to change this and I'm going to put something like join our membership in there. And then I'm going to go choose action, go to link, and I'm going to paste that link in there like that and click save and now i've got this beautiful um block being put in and i can even make it bigger so you can just style this you can spend as much time as you like just getting it to look good so i'm going to move this a little bit that way so it's a bit bigger so it fits in there um also my text um i'm going to make that tint a little bit stronger so that's good. So the text shows up. I might even take this text and make it to a semi bold. So it stands out a bit more. Now it looks really nice. Now I do want my image to have a little, maybe a little border around it. So I'm going to click the gear icon for the image and I'm going to go bold, border style solid. I'm going to maybe give this a radius of like 15 and I'm going to give it a border width of say four in there. And that now really pops, but I could also make that white as well, just to break it from the outside. So it looks a lot better. And that is a new block. So it's kind of gonna replace this whole block. So now I've got this first block. If I like it, I can just carry on. So let me just put in here, good doggy membership. Okay, and then under there, I could actually put subscription if I wanted to as well. So you get the idea. So I've now created my own block. Now what I can do is I can duplicate this block out. So I can duplicate the block and this time I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna change the way that it's kind of working in here. So I'm gonna add some extra bits. I'm gonna click in this big row and I'm gonna put in here 
Go right hand click, and I'm going to add a new column. Okay. Now I'm going to right hand click, and I'm going to add a new column. So I've got four now. I've got four columns. So you could use two if you wanted to. I'm going to use four for this, and I can move this stuff around. Actually, I don't. Maybe I don't want that one. I'm going to delete this column out. Let's go back to a two column. And let's take this and let's drag it under here. So this is what I love about Zenla is this ability of actually being able to drag and drop certain elements. So now I can take this main row and I can actually bring it in a bit. So if I don't want it to be, you know, I can bring it right in there or I could even delete this out. I could go delete this column and delete it out like that. And now I've got something like this. Now I don't need this to be massive. I can actually bring this in if I want to. So I can bring this down. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to bring it across. And this is going to save time in a second when I start to produce my other blocks. So I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to drag it across. And then I will have all of my, my membership and my two courses all completed in custom blocks, which can obviously save you a lot of time. So we're going to shoot across here, put this into here. Now I'm going to swap these images over. So I'm going to click in here and we're now looking for the anxiety um, picture. So I'm going to go into my images. And I've got the anxiety one there. I think that's one of my courses. Upload without crop and bang, it's appeared in there now. So I've got this all working. I'm just going to check my good doggy site, and make sure I've picked the right of course, yeah, I've got an anxiety and toilet training. So this one I'm going to choose for toilet training. So I'm going to go into the icon here and click across, grab the pink one, which is the toilet training. And again, upload without crop in there. Remember, our size is 1920 by 1080. So I'm going to call this dog anxiety. Of course. And inside here. something like that. And then of course I could change this text and I'm going to link through to the correct place. So I'm going to click the gear icon. I'm going to go and just say enroll here. And I'll choose the other one as well. Let's put the same. I like to work multi on multiple things at the same time, but guys, take your time. I'm also going to change the style. So I'm going to change this border and stuff to this pink um, outside here. And let's go down to the bottom here, pick that pinky color there to match this block. And I'll do the same with this. And then I just need to link it up, change the background color. And I've got a custom block made for these two courses as well, done in a few minutes. So that looks good. So now I need to link it up. So I'm going to just jump into my courses again, and I can just find that correct page. So I've got the anxiety standalone course here. If I go into the pages again, I'm going to send, let's send this one straight to the checkout page. So I'm going to, this time I'm going to send them straight to the checkout page. So really up to you. If you want to do send them to the checkout or the sales page, uh, just depends on what you want to do. So again, I've got go to link. I'm going to press control A to delete that link out, paste our new one in. I'm going to save it. And that now I've got the toilet training one to do. So I'm going to jump into that course, toilet training standalone. Do check that you've got the right course if you've cloned any, by the way. And I'm going to grab the checkout link for that as well. So let's copy that checkout link for that one. Jump back in here and paste it in. Now, guys, just as a little bit of an added bonus in here, let's copy that in there. Uh, you can also link up the images as well. So if you wanted to, the images could be linked up inside there as well. Let's go into there. Let's go to settings and drop the link in here. So on click go to, and then I can save that. And I'll do the same for this one as well. I can simply open this one up, grab the link from there that I didn't get last time by copying it all, jump into there, back to here, put that link in there, click save.
And I'm going to change this background image. So let's change the tint on it. I'm going to change the tint to a darker color, maybe this. Um, and I'm going to change the image over. I might this time I'll search on Pixabay. So I've just put puppy in here and we'll look for a nice picture. So that's that's one I've used before. I think I'll grab that one and use that one. I'm going to insert without crop and then I'm going to get my nice little doggy picture appear in there like that. Uh, in fact, I like it on the white, so I'm going to put it back to what it was, uh, maybe a little bit less on there. So now I've got this all set up and it's covering these courses. I could actually go ahead and delete this out. So I'm deleting that out there and I've got my block down there. It goes straight into it. I click save and now I have a new logged out page. So let's go and have a look at it now and make sure it's all OK. Let's go into the good doggy site. I'm going to do this in incognito. Paste that in there. And now we have this. We have these blocks that we set up bypassing the dynamic block. So if I click this one, it's going to take me straight into the good doggy membership site, showing me the courses that are included and the price. And if I go back and I click on here, this should take me to the checkout page for the dog anxiety course, which it does. And of course, I've got the same for this as well, toilet training. And finally, these images are all linked up as well. So they also go through to the right place. So you can see how you can also, on some elements, you can bypass the dynamic blocks that are in there. Now, it's worth pointing out some things on the dynamic blocks, such as the login, you're not going to be able to change that much because um, it's just it's a really important thing that we don't don't allow you to sort of touch. But as far as creating these blocks like this and jumping to different pay courses, different pages in your courses um, to, as you saw there, not just in the courses, but also in the bundles, you can jump to pages, but you can also jump into any marketing funnel. So if you created any marketing funnels, again, you can send them straight to those marketing steps. You just need to come into the funnel, go to the funnel steps, and then obviously, you'd probably use the opt-in page, copy that and add that to the button. So in all these places where you see these dynamic blocks, you have this opportunity to actually just make it your own. And I know a lot of people go in and say for this, they actually put the prices in there. So they might put something like, um, they might put some text in there, just maybe used a text block like that. And then they might come in here and put, um, uh, just a month. So they might put a price in there like that, and then they might up this to like, say something like 24 to make it really big and bold. They might choose an extra bold in here, and then they might, some people go in there and they change it and make it a red color like that. Or they might want to put um, reduced from and then they could put 75 and then you can actually go over this text and with a PC, you can press control and S and it'll actually do a strike through. So that's what you could do. And then of course you could, um, you could copy that block and drop it into the other areas. So if I wanted to make this black as well, I could just, just use a text editor in here and just choose that, make it black and put that in there and choose the text editor in here. And again, make that black. So you've got this um, stuff going on here. So this can really work for you again. You know, you, you could just clone this and because a Zen there's amazing drag and drop ability, you can actually just drag these down into here and then just change them over or, or put it up here. It's up to you. The flexibilities are limitless with Zen. And that's what I love about the platform. Um, so there you go. That's how you can set up these blocks and get rid of some of the dynamic blocks that you've got set. Once you're finished, you just click save. Now, if you want this to appear on the membership page, and remember, we locked off the membership, then you can, of course, 
got you can save that as a template and just drop it into that logged in page so that is how you can bypass you don't have to use the dynamic blocks in there so that's the first kind of uh, thing that i wanted to talk to you about so it gives you unlimited things you can really do with this i mean you can also tie a button straight in and go to one of your blog posts if you've got a blog post set up on your channel again you can just link to the blog post you can go into the blog post if you've created one and you can link to that particular blog post so all these options that are available to you is really good now i've got obviously we have manually created those blocks there but you also have a set of blocks that you could choose in here you've got lots of different types of blocks wherever you see the word dynamic it normally means it's pulling something in um, when you don't see that if i go to the call to action blocks see these haven't got dynamic on them so you can go in there and use that as a base so it's quite good if you're not a designer you can go and grab one of these blocks drag it across and then you can customize it as you as you like it so you'll see also it's changed color this is to do with the branding if i click in the gear icon here and i turn off apply branding it will go in how it was designed okay so by turning on apply branding it will put your default color of the of the font and the font itself and any button colors into what you've applied to the branding so you can turn that on and off in there um, this is how it comes by default so you have that option to do that as well so with the aid of all these pre-made blocks that we already have and the ability to quickly create anything that you could imagine uh, zenla really does give you the flexibility to go wild so that is how we can sort of bypass dynamic blocks inside of Zenla. All right, so in this little workshop, I want to show you how to do a nice dividing line rule between here. Now, as part of our elements, we do actually have um, blocks that allow you to actually go in and drop dividers in, but they're not the best in the world because they're just lines like this um and it's kind of doesn't look that good i mean you can use them but i prefer to uh go in and just create a block so it's really easy guys just go and create an empty block drag it into the divided area and then we can just give that a color so if i go into here i can go in and say i want a nice little color of maybe um something like an orange okay so now if i do that and we preview this page remember this is for logged out users if i look in here i'm logged in so i don't want to do that i want to make sure i'm looking at this in incognito so i'm going to jump into chrome's incognito on the right hand side drop down and we're going to enter that in there and then hit this now you're going to see now that we've got a massive orange so what we can do to control this is really easy we can jump into the editor and actually that width is being controlled by these so this is actually 200 so if i take one of these up and i make it sort of maybe i bring it up bring it up bring it up till it kind of disappears and then i bring this up i can then set a, a pixel width so if i say a pixel width of about 10 that's going to be the size of it so if i click save now don't worry about this preview and then we refresh our page on here you're going to have a nice little 10 millimeter 10 pixel uh, line divider so this can be a really good way to separate things out so again once you've done it once and you're happy with it you could then take this block and you could duplicate it and then of course once you've duplicated it you could then bring it down so you could bring it down underneath that block there to create divider save it come back into here and then refresh and you're going to see that you have that divider down the bottom as well which can add um, it can make it nice and break the page up quite nicely as well so that's how you can create a nice divider inside of zenla really really easy guys to do um, so that is how you do it right so the next thing i want to talk about is actually creating a round um actual image in here now of course we could export out a png with transparent and make it round but 
What would be nice is actually if we can use some of the controls that are already in Zenla to create a round look. Now, the only thing we need to remember with creating round images is the image needs to be square because you can then use the corner, corner radius. And because it's equal, both width and height, it will then become a circle. So I'm going to use Canva to do this. I'm just going to set up a simple Canva document. I'm going to drop an image in and then I'm going to show you how you can do it round inside of Zenla. So I'm inside my free Canva account. I'm going to go create a design and I'm just going to pick a custom size. I'm going to put this in at 500 by 500, which will give me a fairly nice sized image, but not too big. I'm going to go create design. Now that's going to give me a nice square, exactly square image to drop stuff into. So now I can go and just search for some images inside here. I'm going to go to photos. And because this is a dog site, I'm just going to put dog in here and hit enter there. So I have a nice, uh, some nice images. This is actually a cut out image, but I think I'll go and grab, say something like something on a color background. Let's grab this little dog here. Let's drop him in. Now what I can do is I can set him to the background. If I right hand click, I can set image as background. There we go. So he's in there. You don't have to set him as a background there. You can put any um, graphics you want in there, but remember this is going to be rounded. So I want to be very careful. So now I've got that image. I'm now going to export it out. So I'm going to go share. I'm going to go download and I'm going to download this as a nice JPEG there. So the size is quite small. I've got the quality setting on about 80, but you can come down to about 70 without losing too much quality. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in 70 and be a smaller image. So it will actually load quicker on the web page. So now I've got that set. I'm just going to click the download now and we can download that image. Now you can save this as a template so you can swap this out later. If I wanted to swap this out, I detach it from the background by right hand clicking. I would delete it out and I would drag a new image in there. I can then set that as image background and I could export that out. So I can do this really quickly so you can keep this as a template. So I have my design already downloaded here inside my folder. And uh, I'll just rename it here. Let me just flick this across and I'll just rename it. I'm going to call this square for this um, example. Let's just go call it square. It's in my downloads folder. So now I'm going to jump back into the site and I'm going to show you how you can do it. So it's really easy, guys. You just have to uh, drop the image in there. I'm going to just drop it below here. It doesn't matter for this test, but you can drop it wherever you like. I'm going to go into image. I'm going to go to upload. I'm going to locate that file, which is in my downloads folder. I'm going to click in here. I'm going to click open. I'm going to upload without the crop because I want it nice and square in there. And now what I can do is I can come into the settings and I can come over where it says border corner border and i can put in here a really high amount like 500 and now it is round now what is perfect about this is that i can also put a frame around it so i could put a solid around it and i could do a border width of say eight in here and then i've got a nice border going around this now of course i can still resize this image in here as well and of course i could drop this into other parts of the site as well like there and then resize it down so you can create these really nice um rounded corner just by using square images not having to use transparent pngs or anything that are bigger in file size and it can be done really easily inside of zenla so that's created rounded images inside of zenla Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about now in this part is animation. So it's really good sometimes to add a little bit of animation to just get your, um, your page looking better. And it's really easy for everything you've got in Zenla, you've got animation preferences. I'm going to choose this image and I'm going to go into the gear icon. If you go over to settings, you're going to see down here we have animation effects. So you can choose from a myriad of different animation effects, such as pulse, and it will give you a preview of what it looks like. And you can also set a delay. So when someone lands on your page, you can uh, you can say to have this effect happened after a certain amount of time, or you can repeat it by doing intervals. So if I wanted to, like every two seconds, I could have this repeating. So if I click save to this now, and we look at it in incognito, you're going to see that effect take place. Okay, so let's jump into incognito now and load this up. And straight away, you're going to see bang, 
And every two seconds, that is going to pulse because that's what we've set it on. So that is how we can set up animations. Now, animations can be set up on everything inside Zenla. So if you wanted to, uh, sometimes a small amount is better than too much, but you can apply it to everything. So for instance, I'm going to apply it to the whole block. So if I go into settings again, you've got this animation and I could do something like a perspective left. And so what it will do is it will do that. So let's click save and then look at this in incognito mode. Let's now click refresh. And now you're going to get this. So it just drops in like that and that pulses. So animation can be really good, but be careful you don't do too much of it because it can be a distraction. So now it's really good because if you go out of the area and then you come back, then you're going to see it's going to flash up. This can be annoying sometimes if people are flicking around, but it's still a really good effect to be able to do it. So you've seen that we can do it on the block. We can also do it on the row. So you can create some really funny effects going on. I could do a perspective in on the right for this. So this will go like this. So and I could delay this maybe by two seconds or something or one second. And so what will happen is because this is going, the, the whole block is going left uh, straight away. And this is then one second after it should then wrap around and then this should wrap around after. So let's test it. So you can set up these little sequences of animations, which can be really cool, but also could be distracting. Let's try this now. So like bang and then bang and then pulse. So you can set up these little sequences to happen, which I'm sure you'll agree is really, really cool. So these effects are pretty stunning. So uh, that's just a few things that we can do uh, inside of Zenla to just make your sites look even better. Now, one final thing I want to point out to you um, with this little part of it is design. Now, what you should be doing, and this is a general rule, is try not to have more than two different font types. If you can, just use one. Now, I've used one font type that's very flexible. If you look inside here and we look at the font, you'll see I'm using Open Sans. But the great thing about Open Sans is there's so many different choices you can use. You've got light version, regular, semi-bold, semi-bold, italic, bold, bold, italic, extra bold, bold, italic, um, there, extra bold. Um, so I have a lot of choices with what font, with what weight I want of the font. Now, some fonts do not. So for instance, if I just do a duplicate of this, because I don't want to mess this up. Um, if I choose a font such as Lato, for instance, um, this should give us a fairly big choice. It does. Yeah. So you have a big choice with Lato, but let me try and find something that's not going to give me so many um, choices, like maybe Montserrat. Um, that gives me quite a lot of choices, but there are some in here that will not give me a lot of choices. Uh, let's try ABs. So here, for instance, if I went for this ABZ, I only have a choice of regular and regular italic. I've got no bold. Um, so you want to be aware of that when you're choosing your font type as well. So remember, try to stick to one to two fonts maximum. Make sure those fonts have a lot of choice in them so that you can do varying weights of those. Also make sure that your headings and your subtitles are the same font size Okay, throughout. You want to make sure that your body copy, the main copy in your site, is the same size throughout. Try to avoid different sizes in different places because it looks really bad. Um, so if you have a little sheet you can write out with your font choices for heading, subtitle, then that will be best. Like, for instance, this one would be Open Sans Bold 36. OK, and it's in this color here. I can write that color down 464646. Four, four, six, so I know. OK, and then you might say, right, OK, well, I want a subheading and I want this one to be in a lighter text and I want it to be, say, 24 and I might want it in a light color there and I might want to put that in an orange. I don't know. It's up to you. So then you'd write that down so that you know the color and you know the size of everything as well. 
So that's on fonts, but also with colors as well. Make sure that you're using colors carefully throughout your site. Now you'll notice this site, because Dog Anxiety is orange, then inside that page, it is all orange. And for instance, the toilet training, which is this pink color, you can see that also that has all the pink color applied to that as well. So these are things that you should be thinking about when you do this sort of stuff like if you go into the toilet training here you can see it's all this kind of pink color um, you can see that inside here it's all orange this is basic design you don't need to be a designer to stick to these kind of basic principles you know if you keep everything consistent in the site and you have a color palette that you're using and you're making sure you're applying that in, in the site, it doesn't matter if it's tints of that color, like this background image, it will look better. It's a lot better than going alone. Now, one more point I wanna bring out about design is have a look around on the internet, have a look at other sites you like the look of, and then mirror those themes across into your site. Take the best of other people's sites and use them to get inspiration and avoid having to be a designer. You can get the content. There's lots of great sites out there. Definitely check out our showcase site, so if you go to showcase.newzenla.com, you're going to see in here, we have loads of sites created by Zenla users. So inside here, if you've got something on animals and pets, you can jump into here and you can see what other people are doing. So you can see how they've done all their sites. You can even click through and see their sites. And these are all Zenla sites. You can see what they've done and how it's working, what's working for you, what's not working for you. Um, this is obviously very colorful character character and they've applied that color into here which is really good i would probably have done this in white text because it's just a bit jarring and with this blue it's very contrasty um clashes a little bit um especially with that red as well so sometimes overuse of color can be a little bit of a killer you know it's also pink down here so it's a lot of that same color which is just too much um little is often more with design but you can go to our showcase site and you can look at some of the sites in there and not necessarily in your sector you might want to go and have a look at some of the other sites like uh, business and marketing so inside here you might say you know what i can make this work for my site so this is victorian rose this is marketing sites there's our kevin in there with his wife and you can have a look at those sites and you can get inspiration from them the main thing here to remember is consistency with the site as well. Have a look at sites, see what they like, not necessarily Zen the sites. You could have a look on the internet, find other sites as well. So just bear this in mind as well when you're moving forward with your design. Just re-look at those pages. Okay. So let's move on now. There's a couple of things I want to pick up on that you need to make sure of uh, before you're finishing your site. One is the pages. Now, we've set up lots, this whole live workshops that we've been doing, we're doing lots of different things in here, um, setting up uh, landing pages. We did that, which was like a landing page, not connected to the site, but gets people to click through. Uh, we set all these pages up in there. And we also um, did loads of other bits in here as well. But one thing I want to point out to you is, and you need to do this straight away, is check your unsubscribe mail page and your subscribe page here. Make sure that you haven't got the default Zenla logo up there. You wanna make it your own. So make sure you check out the unsubscribe and the subscribe mail. Definitely make sure you check that out. Now, the next thing I wanna move on to is in your integrations. So click integrations, go and check that your, that your mail in here, Zenla Mail has got the right details in it. You want to go to Edit Details and you want to make sure that your from name is in there and that it's using the correct email address. Now, this will be the default email address when you fill out things like email broadcasts, create marketing funnels. So you want to make sure it's the right one. 
Okay. And if you've got a custom domain, you'll want to use your custom email as well in this area. So make sure that's done. Now for deliverability, I do suggest that you use the email domain authentication. It takes a little bit of coding to do on your host site, but it's worth doing because it will allow more emails to get through to people and they won't be sent into spam and things like that. So make sure that you set this up uh, properly. Now, I wanna move on in the next workshop to testing because it's a really important part of every aspect of your site, course, or membership, lives that you're running, or funnels. You need to know how to be able to test your site as a student and not as admin, which is completely different. Okay, we wanna look at testing. Now, testing as a student is really important. And you wanna be testing as a student. You don't wanna be testing as admin. Now, you know that you can come into here and you can go into one of your courses and you can click here, preview, and you can preview the course access page. Um, you can see in here, you can look around, you can even go into the lessons and you can view those lessons. But, and this is the big but, this is you're only able to access these because you are logged in as a user. OK, so we won't be able to access them. If I take the page, for instance, here and I copy this page, the course access page, and then I go into incognito mode where I'm not logged in, I will not have access to that page. It's going to take me to logging here. And even if I log in, if I haven't got access to that course, I'm not going to be able to see that page. So I'm seeing that page because I am logged in as the as the admin. I can see everything. I can even go in and look at the live pages and all of these things. Whenever you do a course or wherever you do a change on your site, you need to make sure you're checking it as a student. This is so, so important and it includes everything that you do. So I'm going to show you how you can check it. You can add yourself manually. Now, I want to point out right at the beginning that it's definitely worth if you've got the pricing set up to check that your money is going through, especially when you first set up your first course. You want to check that the money is being paid into your Stripe or your PayPal account. And it's well worth actually buying it and then refunding that money back to yourself from either Stripe or PayPal. It's really easy to do. You go into your Stripe account or your PayPal account, you find that transaction and you hit the refund. And then, it, OK, it might take five days, 10 days to get back into your account but at least you've tested it there's lots of people don't test things and then they have they've set up their paypal or their stripe wrong and then they have a lot of problems later because they didn't test it so we're going to test this now as a manual addition to this site uh, so that we can actually go in and view things so what I'm going to do is I'm going to enroll myself for this now when you're added as a user you can enroll yourself for anything let me go into the site. Let me go down to students. You'll see I've got a test one set up already, but I'm going to add one. So I'm going to go add user and I'm going to go and put the, put this in here. So I'm going to put in here. I'm just going to put um, just call myself James and I'm going to fill out some of the details. OK, so I filled out the details in here. You'll also see my role is student it has to be a student if I'm enrolled in, if I'm enrolling in a course. It's not a lead, it's a student. And you can also set a manual password as well. So if we click this open, I can just set up a manual password in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I can fill in this details if I want to. I could tag myself as well. Uh, but down here, this is the important bit because you can see that you can automatically, I'm manually adding myself as a student. I can enroll myself in a course. I can enroll myself in a funnel or live classes, interactive webinars, live webinars. Now I'm going to check the anxiety course. So I'm going to go in here to the anxiety standalone course. I'm going to select the pricing plan for that. And you can send a notification email to you as a user if you want to as well. It's worth checking because remember, we're checking and we're going to click add. Now, I will be able to 
view that course if we go and edit myself notice that i've been in i've been added here if i go and check this inside courses you're going to see that i'm added look i'm actually in there now i could unenroll myself i could even go and add myself to another course i could click membership and then i can enroll myself to this course as well but we're just checking this one for now so what i need to do is i need to go to incognito and i need to just sign in and then i'll have access to this course so we're going to go into incognito window and we're going to hit the return here and i'm going to sign in now so i'm going to sign in with my settings that i got okay let's hit I'm not a robot. Let's choose the bridges that it's asking me to do. And I'm going to verify. And now I'm going to log in. So now I've logged in under my courses, I'm going to get access to the anxiety course that I set myself up for. Now I can click in here and I can just go through here and I can check that it all works. You'll also notice that I can also add a review there. I'm logged in as a student now, so I haven't got access to all of the courses. I'd have to buy them to go in there. So if I wanted to quickly check what the membership would look like in here, I can do that from admin. I can just minimize the incognito window. I can come into me as a student. Let's just go into me as a student. Here we go. And click the edit button here and go into course. And I can select the membership, choose one of the enrolls. I can send the notification if I want to, and I can click enroll. And you're gonna see that I'm gonna appear here. So, cause this is a bundle, it's giving me access to all of the lives and the training that is inside the bundle. So now if I return back to my incognito window and I just hold the control key and refresh here, I'm gonna get lots of other courses come up. Do you see? Because these are all part of that bundle. So now I can go in and happily just check through these and make sure they all work. And you'll see with this membership one, I've got the way to be able to click through to different areas, to different courses inside of that membership. Remember, we set this up when we were talking about memberships. So that is how you can easily do it. Now, remember also, you can add yourself to lives as well. So if you've got any lives running in here, you could set yourself up for any lives. So you can go into the live there and inside of there you can select and register yourself for any lives that are running so this is a really good way of testing everything's working and what you're seeing as a user so if i come back to the incognito if i go to home now i'm going to get that welcome back page not the home page if i log out let's just log out i'm going to go back to the original page that we created there with our little blocks animated blocks and all those things in there so that is how we test as a student it's really really important to test that everything's working that you're receiving all of the automations into your email account as well so that they're all working it is an essential part that we say you have to do that whenever we have things go wrong and we ask the user in facebook did you test it thoroughly? The answer is always no, because if they did, they wouldn't have the problems. They would have found a problem and they would have asked, how do I sort this out? So this is a such an important thing. I can't underestimate how important this is. Remember guys, this is your money. People are coming in there. You want them to have a smooth experience. If they do not, you will not get them resubscribe and those sort of things. And obviously some people might even ask for refunds. If it doesn't work, they get frustrated and go somewhere else thinking that the site isn't professional enough for them. So it is essential that you do this stuff to make sure that it's a really smooth experience for your potential students inside of your course. So uh, I hope you like that um, tips and tricks uh, video there, uh, full of really useful things. Uh, the last one we ended on, which was testing as a student, is the most important thing to do with the platform. Uh, there's so many questions coming to the Facebook group where people are launching tomorrow and then something doesn't work. And it's such it's so distressing uh, for us as a team because we mention testing all the time. And if you haven't tested, um, set things up, uh, you have to do that before you launch, before you get people in, whether they're paying or not. You need to be testing this stuff. 
There's loads of people on the Facebook group will help you. They'll even come in there and make sure everything's working okay with you. Loads of people offer their help all the time. So no excuses. You need to test this stuff before you actually start. You don't. We see these posts coming to Facebook like I'm launching tomorrow and nothing works or I haven't even done my content yet. If you haven't done your content and created it or why are you launching? Don't launch. You need to test this stuff. It doesn't take very long. You saw there, it's probably about four or five minutes testing the course works and then you can go and make a lot of money from it. If you do that without doing it, you're going to annoy the people, especially if you've got an ad campaign or something running, and then that can cause a big, big issue. So guys, that is another day with Zenlo. We're running a little bit later now. It's nearly coming up to half past six. So we've had a bit of a longer one today. Uh, pretty good. We covered quite a lot of stuff there. Um, we had that massive session. I'll try and keep the session shorter. I, I noticed that the drop-off rate was quite high with um, such a long video, so I'll try and keep it a bit snappier uh, next time. And also, uh, thanks to Alice, uh, thanks to Mamit. Um, it was great what they were doing today. Definitely check out Mamit in the last part of session one. She literally does a challenge. Um, check out uh, Alice's top tips on YouTube. Okay. Stay tuned for the next day with Zenlo, which is the last Friday of each month. Okay. So make sure you turn up for that. We put an event in there normally about a week before uh, outlining who's coming on. I'm going to try and get some of the instructors to come on for um, next month as well. And maybe a few uh, surprises. So now I've got a bit of time. I can um, organize that a little bit better. Okay, guys, so hopefully you've learned a lot from this um, for, and this ends our De Rosella session two. So take care and have a lovely weekend. Speak to you soon.